54th annual edition of the Orange County High School football extravaganza from Orange Coast College. Tonight it's the North versus the South. This one has been even Steven for 53 consecutive matches, 25, 25, and three gentlemen. This one has been deadlocked. Hello again, everyone. Kevin Turner along with the coach Bill Kunity and Vince Ferragamo and coach doesn't get any better than this. This one is all locked up tonight. Well, Kevin, the special thing about this football game is it's the end of the season for these high school seniors. A wonderful way to send them off. But for me and for Vince and sure for you, Kevin, this is really the start of the high school football season. The stands are going to be filled tonight with high school players whose teams are all undefeated and they're in the middle of preparing for this coming season. This has always been a spectacular event. It's going to be spectacular again tonight. Vince talking to the officials before the game and they were talking to Scott Meyer, the head coach for the South, and they said, what do you want to do if there's overtime? Scott said, this thing's been tied up for so many years. We've got to let the fans have their way tonight. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and play this one out. Well, it's so interesting to see the two matchups because you have an offensive-minded coach in Scott Meyer, and then you have Fred DePalma on the defensive side, and uh, he's a, a big line guy, so, you know, with the unsung heroes. So it's going to be a little bit different philosophy on both sides, but it stands to be a great game, and these kids want to show what they can do, and they're headed for college. What an honor for both of these staffs tonight. Scott Meyer, consecutive back-to-back -back CIF championships. On the other side, how about Fred De Palma? what he's done at Catella High School. There's a good look at Scott Meyer right there. Catella went to the quarterfinals last year, and you got to be proud of what they've done up there at Catella. Let's take a look at some of the stars on the field tonight. There's Tayupa, the great running back, Tale from Newport Harbor High School, the MVP of the Sunset League, an outstanding running back. And then Tim Reinhardt, just an extremely talented athlete out on the edge, about 6'4", 235. He creates havoc on the defensive side of the football. Of course, he was part of Scott Meyer's back-to-back -back CIF championship team. We all know this young man, 15 sacks coach for El Toro for Rob Friss Ball Club last year, and he's an outstanding physical specimen. And then Alex Torgerson, he led the Chargers last year, Dave White's team, to a CIF championship. He's going to the Ivy League on his way to Penn. Congratulations to Alex Torgerson from Edison High School. Robert Murtha, the outstanding running back from Estancia High School, coming in with a chip on his shoulder tonight, better than 1,500 yards. Wants to prove he can hang with the big boys here tonight. And then this young man here is going to be an outstanding college football player. He passes all the optics. He's a great athlete. He'll play on the defensive side, 1,800 yards last year and 80 tackles on the defensive side. And then Trenton Ashoff, some of you know him from South County, had a little cup of coffee with Ryan Barnes and the Tesoro Titans and then came back to Edison to win the championship. So congratulations to Trenton. This is going to be a great game. On the other side of the ledger, the North is devoid of the marquee talent, but don't tell Fred De Palma and his staff that. These guys are gritty, blue-collar guys. They're all extremely intelligent and very physical football players. Well, Fred played in this game in 1975, and he knows everything that goes into it. You're playing for charities. You're playing for Western Youth Services and juvenile diabetes. It's not just about the players. And Fred told me before this game that he has really loved every minute of coaching this North team. There he is, Fred De Palma. We talked about the success he's had at Cattell, and it all starts with accountability. Started with the little things in the weight room, got great retentions, got about 70 freshmen coming out this year. So that's great news. There's Dallas Parent right there, 1,569 yards, 5'7 from Troy High School. He's going to be the scat back. He'll be the featured back tonight in the backfield. Tavi Jimerson, an Olu standout, just five foot six, but plays a lot taller than that. Very tough, very quick. Got a great low center of gravity, coach. That guy was a big part of that run offense that Chuck Peterson brought along. Manu Pau, you played with uh, his uncle and this young man, not only a great football player, but a great citizen, an Eagle Scout. You know how hard that is to achieve when you've got a full load and you play as many sports as Manu plays. Joseph Enda, gentlemen, this guy's numbers just popped off the page. 149 tackles last year in 2012. And then Hayden Keep, just a good, outstanding, solid, very consistent football player. And then we'll round it out with Mays Masoy. This young man here is a beast. 15 sacks on the year. So Vince, the North guys, they're your homies. I mean, 
You got to be pulling for the north side, being an Orange Park Acres guy. Well, you see Orange Lutheran, you see all the all the teams that surround our area there. But I tell you, there is some great talent on this field tonight, especially up front. That north team is really big and strong and powerful. So don't be surprised that they just stay on the field until it's in the end zone. So, uh, and with the with the rules, Bill, they're so simple and they're so great for a college football game, especially or a high school game like this All Star game. It really makes a lot of sense to keep things just very simple. Well, I think the thing that's so enjoyable about a game like this are some rules that perhaps you're not used to. A team that's behind by 10 points or more, if they score a touchdown, they get the ball back again. The idea here is no blowouts, really. You really have a game where kids are going to get equal opportunity. You can only blitz if your defense is inside the 10-yard line. That's the only time that you're allowed to blitz. And on offense, and you know this breaks my heart, no empty. you, you got to have at least one back in the backfield. South side, north side, we're going to have it all coming up next right here on Time Warner Cable. Moments away from kickoff, the 54th annual Orange County All-Star football game, North versus South. Let's go to the south sideline for more on tonight's game. Garth Wyckoff, head coach Scott Meyer. Coach, first of all, congratulations on this honor. And what's this experience been like for you so far, this opportunity to coach these young men in this All-Star game, this prestigious annual game? Yeah, thank you very much. This is a great event the Bray Lions Club puts on. And uh, so much fun coaching these kids. Great young men and great football players. So it's been a, a fun couple weeks. Match made in heaven for you at Corona Del Mar. Two years on the job, two CIF titles. What can you say about the staff and the players you've coached these past two years? Yes, I'm pretty fortunate. We have a great, great coaching staff, um, you know, great people, great coaches. And uh, the kids we've been able to coach are, you know, smart young men, hardworking, and a lot of support there. So I'm, I'm real lucky to, to be in this position. All right. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. All right. Let's head over to the north sideline with Bob Gibson. Thank you, Garth. Coach, you played in this game yourself back in 1975. 1970. What did you tell these kids, uh, you know, in, in your pregame speech going into this one? You know, I, I told them this. I said, remember who you are and whose you are. Who you are is that name on the back of that jersey, that family, that parent, that grandparent. And whose you are tonight is the North. And that's what I told them just before we went out. So. Uh, tell the Knights are back on the map. How, how good does that feel to have to tell the uh, football back in people's minds again? It's great. I'm so proud of our coaches. Our school, our players have really stepped it up. It's been a, a journey. It's been a long journey, but I, I, I think we're starting to get there. We're, 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 we've arrived, and now we just got to keep working hard to get better. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, back upstairs to you again. All right, moments away from kickoff. Vince Ferragamo, the South has won the toss. They'll get a chance to run the offense. Cayman Carter, young man that we saw all season long for Corona Del Mar, led him to a CIF championship. He'll get the start tonight. Excellent quarterback, and he's uh, very familiar with Scott Meyer's offense, and I think it has a lot to do with the preparation because if you have that actual system in place for a game, quick game like this with only two weeks of practice, you know, you're going to be a lot better. There are the rules we talked about, the 10-point rule. If you're behind by 10 when you score, you get the ball back again. No empty backfields on offense. You must be one running back between the tackles. The defensive rules, you have to have four down linemen. No blitzing, and no rules apply inside the defense when they're in the 10-yard line or going in. So you can have stunning and uh, by defensive linemen only. Stunning again, uh, a blitz would be with a backer. So what does Stunts that mean? Would be no, a game. With no rules. So you can do you whatever know, you want. There's no penalties. Vinny, I coached this game in 1979, <laughs> and we had a re agreement with the North that there would be no blitzing. We come out and run our first, first play offensive the play. They're in a 4-4 stack, and they bring everybody. Yeah. Hey, that's coaching. Yeah, I said, welcome. That's so it. we threw 14 screen passes. <laughs> There's Matthew Barr from Yorba Linda. He'll tee it up on the left side. Hash, beautiful night for football. It's cooled down here. It was about 95 degrees, down to 75. Winds out of the southwest. It's six clear skies for this evening, and Matthew Barr just about ready to Tee this one up, and it'll be Drake Martinez from Laguna Beach High School along with Rock Staff from Tribuco Hills High School. Both these young men can flat fly. Rock Staff on his way to UCLA, and Martinez will join his brother Taylor at the University of Nebraska, and it's going to be Drake Martinez will have a chance to return, and this one goes out of the back of the end zone, first down and 10 for the South, and they'll put it in play at the 20-yard line. You know, Kevin, one thing we did not talk about in those rules 
High school rules, if that ball crosses the plane into the end zone, you cannot run it back. They're going to play college rules where you can run it out of the end zone. Yeah, I think there's debate at the CIF, at the National High School Federation level. It's gone on for the last 20 years, and we'd <laughs> like to see that rule change, but uh, we don't think it's going to happen. So Cayman Carter, the trigger man, wearing number seven tonight. We'll get the start. There he is with the uh, powder blue. Corona Del Mar seeking. They'll go four wide receivers. Drake Martinez in the backfield. Martinez swings out of the backfield. Carter's going to pull it down, and he's going to be hit right at the 15-yard line. He's going to be stacked up for about a, a four-yard loss. Kevin, I'll tell you a quick little story, even though they go no huddle, about Cayman Carter. He's going to be going to SMU as a preferred walk-on. And when he called the coaching staff and asked if he could walk on, they said, well, you, first you have to be admitted. And he said, I already am. <laughs> there are the numbers on Carter, 2,200 yards. And then he had another over 1,000 yards rushing the football on second down. Carter's in trouble, and he's going to go down in the backfield right there defensively. Isaac Fio, 80 tackles on the year, six sacks coming into tonight's game for Marina High School. Well, you see the good judgment here with Cayman Carter, just not – not anyone open, so he just does the next best thing is tuck it away. Don't throw the ball up for grabs. Got to give great credit to Julian Moss, the right corner who came in and crashed that attempted bubble screen. Great defensive play by the Foothill youngster. All right, here we go. Third down and long for Carter. Out of the gun. Three-step drop surveys, has time. Fires over the middle looking for staff and threw it a little too tall, and that's going to fall incomplete, and the punting unit will come on for the south. Wonderful job on defense in that first series by the north. Number one playing coverage because they know their South's going right. to throw the ball. Just playing so the zone coverage. That's well, it. That's they're, basically soft they're getting zone. a whole bunch of guys into those underneath zones. Don't you guys feel there's a little college atmosphere in oh, this I area this. here? I mean, these kids are headed to college, obviously, but I mean, just the, the rules, the way they're playing it, playing it at such a high level at this point. I Alec, saw four cars in the parking lot with Nebraska stickers on them. I go. think they're all yours. Alex Torgerson gets the punt away. It takes a south roll inside the 45. It'll be down right at the 41-yard line. And we've got a penalty marker back up at the 43-yard line of the south and we'll wait and see how this one gets sorted out by our referee tonight steve Heyman. steve Heyman, our referee the umpire mark harrison the head linesman martin Kovarubius, the line judge lance orloff and the back judge reed corview that was a block in the back dead ball personal foul against red 15 yards from the end of the kick be a first down that's going to move the ball back to the 41 yard line and Kevin, you're going to see the double wing, and this double wing, that's right, they're going to march it off now, so it's going to be back inside the 30. But the double wing is a misdirection offense, and as you mentioned in the open, they're going to feature some guys, Dallas Parent from Troy High School on one side, uh, the quarterback, number 16, Steven Anderson from Westminster. And Steven at six foot and 210 pounds, big guy. So you're going to watch motion almost on every play. Tavi Jimerson in the backfield. They're going to reverse it back. Oh, They're going to somebody wide pass open. it back wide open down the middle. And this one is complete down to the 30 yard line. It's Shad Pace. And Pace is going to be finally run out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. First and goal. The very, very first wow. thing you think about the wing T yeah. is pound the ball. So what does Fred DePalman do? He comes out and runs double a pass. double reverse flea flicker. It, it's beautiful. Beautiful execution. Here's a great look. There's the handoff, the reverse, the pitch. And 16, Steven Anderson throws a strike. And number 11, Shad Pace makes the most of this. Tell you what, that's nice exciting, design, isn't it? Bill. That was a great play. Reed Andrew finally there to wrestle Pace out of bounds. Who said Fred DePalma is not creative? Right. Love that. First and goal. Hand off right side. And fighting ahead around the corner is Vizcaye. 2,400 yards on the year for Joshua. Vizcaye very fleet of foot around the right side. And that's going to bring up second down, the ball resting right at the four-yard line. The one thing about the wing tee is it's kind of like the option assignment football. And every once in a while, you can get those secondary guys chasing fakes. 
Vizcaya left side, he's gonna be wrestled down in the backfield. Jeff There's Nelson the there from El Toro High School in the backfield. And Nelson, 15 sacks, a first team all leaguer on his way to Saddleback, 6'1", 230 pounds. There's Vizcaya's numbers, a 5.2 yard average on seven touchdowns. But when I was looking at Nelson, seeing this this list of lineup for all the All-Stars, I'd go, you gotta be kidding, Jeb Nelson's in this game? What a great player he is. And I'm just, look who makes the first tackle here. Well, Vinny, the El Toro offense got most of the headlines with Connor Manning, but that linebacking core for Robert Frith were tremendous. Anderson out of the gun, dumps it off into the flat to Tavi Jimerson, and he's gonna be wrestled down right at the five yard line. Great recognition out there in the flat. And a nice tackle. Connor, is that Connor Tui or no, Nick Crouch Nick come Crouch. out from his uh, yep. safety position. Crouch and Tui both from Tesoro High School, played under Brian Barnes, and Barnes now uh, assisting with his father, John Barnes at Los Alamitos High School. And here comes Matt Barr on to attempt a field goal. 21 yard attempt from the right hash. Out of the hole to pace. Snap back, hold down, kick up on the way, and he. Pulled it to the left, no good. So the South All-Stars, after having their backs up against the wall, first and goal, hold serve on fourth down after the missed 21-yard field goal. But kind of like the way that Fred DePalma opened up this ball game. He served notice. Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if you're a wing T team, you're built on misdirection run with a lot of motion and stuff. And he did that. He gave the ball off on the handoff, and then there was a reverse, and then there was the flea flicker pitch. And then there's a guy wide open. And I'll tell you what. It's a great way to play this. Bill, that's I the think. way Fred has coached his entire career, though. Did terrific, you see the, terrific the football defensive coach. coordinator that, uh, that Coach De Palma recruited? That's Lanny Boer. Yes, came it over is. from Anaheim from High School. Yeah. He's running the defense tonight for the North. Boer and uh, De Palma look like they could be twin brothers. Here's Cayman Carter on the keeper on first down. And he's wrestled down after he gets across the 25 and up to the 26-yard line. That's something that this young man did last year as well as anybody in Orange County, and that was the zone read and the keep. And he's going to be doing that at SMU for June Jones now. He, matter of fact, came and leaves for SMU tomorrow morning. <laughs> but 1,000 yards and 15 rushing touchdowns for the back-to-back -back Corona Del Mar CIF champions. This, uh, this one's going nowhere, fellas. A good defensive surge on the inside by the north front three and coming off the bottom of the pile there is Isaac Foa again, Fioa from Marina High School, 290 pounds of raw meanness. That just shows you how important that offensive line or the, how important the trenches are in the game of football. Well, you, gotta, you gotta move them back. When we talked to Fred about this, he said his defensive linemen were really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. They're down at five. Looked like defensive encroachment on the left side. It looked like uh, Pau a little bit early on the snap count, trying to judge the snap count. We'll wait and see what uh, Steve Heyman has to say here. You know, you talked about the uh, kick out of the end zone as your favorite rule you'd like to see change. My favorite would be end encroachment. <laughs> it will build. If you can get back, get back. Didn't you say there's no blitzing in this? You saw outside? it coming, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> well, I mean, what threat? If you're up there threatening the blitz, I mean, he can't come anyway. So <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense to even, even get up close to the line of scrimmage. All right, so Carter's got a fresh set of downs. First down and 10, right at the 30-yard line. The zone raid, and Carter is bottled up in the backfield. He, nice fake there to Teupa, but uh, that backside wasn't buying it, Coach. No, you know what? The discipline of the North defensive line is very evident, but they've also got some tremendous players in there. Isaac Faoa from Marina, 6'2", Seichi was right there, Joshua too. Joshua Huff. Yeah. Here we go on second down. Carter, snap throw right side. This one almost picked off, thrown very dangerously late into the flat, looking for Cody White. We've got an update on Cody White from El Toro High School. He has a commitment to Azusa Pacific, but this just in, Cody White's been offered a preferred walk-on at the University of Southern California. How about that? I'll tell you. Getting the golden ticket to SC, that's not bad. That's got to be tempting. I'll tell Boy, you that's what. That's a time route there, Bill. An exact parallel to Robbie Boyer from modern day. Got the same kind of offer and had a nice career there with his cousin, Matt Barkley. Aiden Paul done there on the defensive side. This ball batted away. Textbook there. Julian Moss 
That's Doug Case's finest right there from Foothill High School. You know, his brother broke his collarbone or we'd have two Mosses in this game. Two tremendous athletes. That's a great defensive play here. The ball is thrown under the post route a little bit late, not deep enough actually, and uh, Moss comes in there and makes a great Take play. Take this one, rack it, and send it to your coach's clinic. There you go. That is textbook perfection right there for Julian Moss. Torgerson, this one comes off the side of his foot, shanks it out of bounds just across midfield. And so the North will have outstanding field position once again. We'll see if Fred De Palma, what kind of rabbit he can pull out of the hat here in the second series of the night. No score, it's the North and the South. This series all tied at 25 wins apiece and three ties. So tonight could break it wide open for one of these two regions. Yeah. You know, Always been close. Looking at this, the year I coached this game, I found this to be true in the first quarter. These guys haven't played football in seven months. So there's always a bit of, let's get used to banging way harder than you do in practice. And then the game kind of heats up from there. Boy, big hit. Vizcaya lowered the boom as he turned up field going north and south. And uh, that'll put the caffeine back in your coffee, coach. Yeah, Crouch, wow. Crouch kind of caught the, uh, the brunt of that helmet and, uh, and shoulder pad. Steve Anderson, 96 and 164, almost 60% thrower for 1,466 yards. But I tell you what, this guy, when he runs the ball, is a force. There's a give on the inside to Jimerson. The number that you don't see with oh. Anderson is the 4.3 number, and that's his grade point average. You should have seen the block Joshua Vizcaya put on the Braille Linda 5'7", 195 pounder on the corner. And a little bit of pushing and shoving after that plays over, but every once in a while, if you get dotted like that, that's football. Yeah, defensive backs don't think they're gonna come take a shot at Tell you. Tell you what. But you know what, all-star game, anything can happen. A little bit of extracurricular activities here, I think. It's the initial shot. Uh, you don't want to be messing with uh, Shoddy, that's for sure. Here's Trevon Coley from Modern Day, and he gets upended as he comes across. And that's Landon oh, Cook from San Clemente. Cook. That's uh, one of Jaime Ortiz's finest right there on the defensive side. And Cook really lowered the boom on Coley. KT, yeah, how many times have we seen Landon Cook make plays like this from his linebacker position? He's being blocked by number 70, Connor Versteeg, but he gets through the block and get, makes the shoestring tackle. Yes, saw who was coming across down yeah. the line. That was Garrett Moreno. Moreno is going to gray shirt on his way to Arizona State. Anderson's got time. Now here comes pressure. Here's Corona Del Mars. Timmy Reinhardt there to make the sack, and Reinhardt coming into tonight's game leaves his senior year with nine sacks for the Sea Kings, 47 tackles, two-time all-leaguer for Scott Meyer and Dan O'Shea. Something near and dear to my heart, that young man is a diabetic, as am I, and he's handled it just marvelously as an athlete and uh, just another thing in life that you deal with. Anderson, here's the reverse. Little stutter step move in the backfield. Dallas Parent gets free, and then he's whacked as he comes across the 35-yard line. And he was hit pretty hard there by Alexander Klatt. Boy, Dallas Parent did a great job getting away from Marino there on the reverse and just did great second effort getting up the field and almost nearly getting the first down, but great runner from Troy High School. That guy, Vince, had he had kind of electric magic numbers if you look at his per yards per carry average five foot seven bill that he guy can do can a lot really, he can get in and hide behind the big boys just pick up the first down there this system is a really good system actually in the offensive scheme of things when you allowed you can't have an empty backfield so you have to have a little bit more versatility with one and two back yes. most teams have gotten away from two back so right. if they're not going to allow you with an empty backfield this is a great job by De Palma because he's employed two backs as well as one back. Guys, let's keep an eye on number 57, the center for the North. Here oh. comes Garrett Marino with his hair on fire. Look out. You got to find a way right, to block that guy, He Bill. went right through the yellow light, the red light, and there was a <laughs> mid-collision 
Somebody got T-boned in the intersection there, and I think it was Anderson, the quarterback. Well, when wow. you're going to pass the ball, especially at the quarterback's blind side, you better be aware of that number 99 on that side, coming yeah. off that weak side, and have you know, one or two, probably two or three guys there to block that guy. Vince, if I'm the coach of the North team, the day I meet with my group, I put a piece of paper up on the wall saying <laughs> block it. 99. Well, easier said than done, I guess. Yes, that's going. right. Got a new quarterback in the ball game right now. Here's a screen coming across the middle to Shad Pace. He's got some daylight to the 25, makes a move to the 20. And that's going to be a first down, a nice run after catch again by Shad Pace. Coming into the game tonight, 62 receptions, 11 touchdowns for Jeff Bailey's. You're well, you see, you see a coaching maneuver here. You, you see the sack on the quarterback the previous play, then they come right to a screen. So it's excellent, excellent change of pace on the offensive side of things. Guys, Isaac Chain, 5'9", 190. It's fit, number 57, the center. He's on his way to Army basic training. He's going to college. He's lost about 30 pounds, so he comes into tonight's game, you know, about 165 pounds, dripping wet. But he's going against number 49 on the uh, on the defensive side, actually number 54, Milo Aviles, who's 5'6", 165. So you've got two guy featherweight guys going yeah. at it down in the trenches tonight. What a matchup! That end right around. side. This guy again, boy, you can hear the plastic cracking every time he puts his head down. What a physical specimen he is well, you can running tell, the football. You can tell why they ran the ball so much at Braille Linda. Huh? Well, well if you watch like this that, on our replay, goodness. there's an old football axiom that low pad level wins, right, right, Vince? That's it. Well, he gets his pad level down, but he brings the load. When he brings, if you're going to hit that guy, you better tie yourself together. How about Maurice Jones Drew lookalike <laughs> contest yeah, exactly. tonight? Exactly. There it is, a good resemblance. Steven Anderson now out of the gun. Vizcaya. Jeff Schott comes up, loses his head here. And tonight uh, they'll have that rule intact. Looks like he's going to have to go off the field after his helmet came off. Don't forget, as good as these guys are on offense, you have as good as guys on defense. No question I mean, about it. That's, that's why they're called all-stars. That's right. So far, we're seeing a very physical football game, gentlemen. I you know, like you, what I'm seeing out here. Kevin, if you look at which team had the razzle-dazzle play and which one hit the middle screen, it would be the running team. 32-yard <laughs> field goal. Barr pulled one wide left from 21 yards. Snap back, hold down. This time the kick is up, and it is right down Main Street. So the North strikes first tonight here in the 54th edition of the Orange County High School All-Star Football Game. Three to nothing, we'll take a timeout. Three to nothing. The North, a 32-yard field goal by Matthew Bars, broken the ice here with 116 remaining in quarter number one. Coach, you were talking about it in the break about Garrett Marino reading, recognizing the pulling tackle, and what, what what's going on down there? Well, I've seen him twice now stop his pass rush and play the screen, so he's really been well coached. But what a motor! On that play where he got the sack, the tackle pulled, and normally the guard will block back on that defensive end and Marino just beat everybody. Now they can run this out. Here comes Rock Staff from Tribuco Hills out of the end zone and Staff puts his head down out to the 20 yard line. Fine return, 24 yards for Alex Staff. He's going to UCLA as a preferred walk on. Uh, you were mentioning Marino on defense there, Bill, but I think they have a guy that can match up pretty well as Ahmad Sunda. I mean, from, from Canyon, if they pull him and take care of that defensive end, it might be one way of that's, that's what to I eliminate would. that. That's, <laughs> I mean, I'd put that guy on him. Here you know, comes Alex Torgerson, gentlemen, 2,300 yards last year, 17 touchdowns. He's on his way to the Ivy League. He's going to play at Penn. Was the uh, helmsman last year for the uh, Edison Chargers and their CIF championship. This one intended for Drake Martinez falls incomplete. Now you and I went to down. practice and we watched Drake Martinez on the quick draw or inside zone play. Amazing. You can see there Alex Torgerson, 200, excuse me, 2,337 yards, 17 touchdowns. 
and he took that team to a CIF championship. And then on this field, I think you and I came and watched him play Sarah and held a state championship team to three touchdowns. How about the pressure tonight from the North defensive front? It's been outstanding. Well, that was a case, right? Eduardo Diaz from Valencia High School, 6'2 and 245 pounds. They're very good, Vince, at shedding blocks. Yeah. You're going to get blocked, but you don't have to stay blocked. Well, in these type of games, these, these all-star games, it's very difficult to coordinate that offensive line. They haven't played ever together, so the only two weeks of practice doesn't really, I mean, the defense actually has a slight advantage on the front line. On third down. Torgerson has some time, throws into the flat. This one thrown dangerously into the flat. There's going to be pass interference. That was tended for Alex Staff, and over there defensively was James Ferraro from Servite High School. Wow, that's a great example of the arm strength of Torgerson. And I've been watching him play at practice here before the game and throwing. I'm so impressed with his arm. I mean, he's a, he's a prototypical quarterback, has a great arm, can throw almost any kind of pass. And he's just getting started right here. Is that the Alex receiver, Shoffett? Yeah, receiver on this route is Alex Shoffett. Matter of fact, the right side of that offense was Cody White and Alex Shoffett from El Toro High School, a couple of Robert Frisk guys. Pass interference is the call. And now, if you're looking at the scheme that the North is running, they're playing a 4-3 cover two. Cover two meaning the safeties are back near the hash. The corners are playing at about six yards. The linebackers are four and a half yards deep to begin with. So, I mean, if you're looking at this, Vince, and you're still calling plays for the Rams, you're yeah. running at this. Well, you've got a zone defense primarily, so you've got a lot of holes in that zone. Just uh, work the zone. First down and 10 from the 35. Torgerson's going to pull it down, and he's greeted as he comes across the line of scrimmage. Hayden Keith there defensively from Valencia High School there to make the tackle. But he's a big boy there, Alex Torgerson. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. You. Number 92 that time and on the offensive line, Jackson Stoddard, 6'2", 245 from Mission Viejo. Got a great block late. But Kevin, we have already reached the end of the first quarter. That went by in a hurry. We'll take a timeout. North on top of the South here in the 54th edition of the Orange County Football All-Star Game. Three nothing, North on top of the South. Beautiful night for football here at Orange Coast College. Kevin Turner along with the coach Bill Kennedy. Vince Ferragamo, Bob Gibson working the near sidelines. Garth Wyckoff working the south side tonight. Marcus Williams, producer director, working double duty tonight in the truck. Happy to have you along here on Time Warner Cable. Second down. Here's the handoff on the inside. Downstairs to Garth Wyckoff. Well, KT, you guys are talking about Drake Martinez, the running back here on the south sideline. Joined his brother Taylor at the University of Nebraska, but what a career he had at Laguna Beach High School. Mr. Everything. He set all kinds of offensive rushing records. He had 34 touchdowns, seven of them on kickoff returns. I asked him, what was he most proud of? They reached the semifinals the last two seasons at Laguna Beach. And he said he is most proud of helping to rebuild that program and get it back on the map. He said, when I was a freshman and a sophomore, the stands were empty. Nobody's there. By about the fifth game of my junior season, they started coming out in numbers and they just continued to build. And what a thrill it was for him to be part of Coach Churchill's team and the success that the Laguna Beach Breakers had the past two years, guys. Thanks a lot, Garth. Nice to see Robert Murtha catching the ball. You know, how about you, Garth, being proud of uh, one of your fellow alums, uh, Drake Martinez, putting your school back on the map? Torgerson on second down from midfield. Inside handoff to Teupu from Newport Harbor. He works the left side and not much doing over there and brought down again by Leoa. He's been very active on the inside tonight for the, uh, the North Yankees. Kevin, I just keep watching Isaac Faoa. He just made a great play beating a double team. And again, I'm so impressed. Huff, number 88, Faoa, number 55 in there, Eduardo Diaz from Valencia. That defensive front from the North 
Vinny, pretty stout. They are good. They talked to Scott Meyer. They played against Huff in the playoffs. Actually, in the final, Torgerson's going to pull it down, and he's greeted right at the 45-yard line, picked up there by Manu Pau. But they were talking about how physical and, and how difficult it was for Corona Del Mar to block Josh Huff. They basically said he's unblockable. Yeah, look from at the this edge. quarterback go, Torgerson. Wow, when you're six foot four, can run like that, get that extra yard, he got that first down. That's that's impressive. That's what he's you call getting T boat. Yeah, he's gonna be a force back there at Penn. I'm telling you. Which tells you he's also an outstanding student. Trips to the left. Cody White singled down here at the bottom. Quick snap throw out into the flat. And that's uh, Shoffit there. And he's trying to find some running room, but not much. You know, that play may not look like much, Bill, but as you know, as a quarterback, that throw was just pitcher perfect. Yes, it and was. it had the right speed on it. It wasn't overpowering the running back. And they may have not got much, but that just shows you what he can do. There's Shoffit right there, great receiver from. You know what, Alex is just such a terrific young man, too, but a two way player, a great safety and a great receiver. Samaj Bilal there defensively from Garden Grove does a nice job nice out on read. the perimeter. Here's Torgerson turning the corner. Nice fake there by Alex. And he gets down to the 24-yard line. And finally, there's Derek Anderson to make the tackle. Watch here's the, the ride. Read. Yep. Reads that defensive end, Bill, and that defensive end closes. There's nobody out there for the quarterback, and that uh, opens a hole up for him. Nice run by Torgerson for the you first know, down. You know, if you're going to run some form of the option in an all-star game, you really put the other team at a disadvantage <laughs> because that takes so much time for assignments, but uh, 143 carries. He's done more with his feet than his arm right now. Teupa, not much there, and i tell see you what, that def I keep harping on it, guys, but uh, this defensive front from the north, we talked about this Whoa. lunch pail gang, these blue-collar guys, they're, yeah. they're coming with their hair on fire tonight. That the was defense. Yeah, the defensive lines. Masoy. The defensive lines on both sides have actually been dominating the offensive line. So, I mean, they, they are, one of the things to do is, the hardest thing in football, which makes great teams great, is that coordination of that offensive line, being yep. able to move that defense. You played with a pretty good group. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's why we were so good. <laughs> on second down from the 24 yard line. Torgerson rolling right, looking, throws incomplete, looking for Cody White. Good coverage there by Trayvon Coley from Modern Day High School. They gotta have that play with the post with the two double in, Bill, and if that free safety wants to come down, that post is gonna be wide open. There's a good look at Trayvon, had an outstanding track season, got all the way to the Masters in the four by 100, ran the 100 in the relay. Very productive for Bruce Rollinson on his march to a CIF final last year, played in the backfield, played some receiver, was one of those Swiss Army Knife utility guys for the Monarchs last year, and he'll go to Golden West College. Vince Likes looking playing to... golf in the, in, when he's not practicing football, Coach. Oh, one of my guys. Oh, oh this one's intercepted. And that's Manu. picked off by Pau. Boy, they, I think they had to mess up on that, Bill. They should have thrown well, the ball to the left. That looked like the play was going. They, they had did. A, they had a touchdown. They set up the screens on both sides, but Monopau went, went the wrong as side. As soon as he saw that receiver take his first step, he blew that up and was in a perfect position to take it. Now, that guy is supposed to be blocked by the second receiver in. Yes. He beat the block. He beat the block. He but the it, looked, it looked like the quarterback was looking left to go left. He did. Yeah, they run it on both sides. But the, the left side was wide open for a touchdown. <laughs> well, the Eagle Scout's going to get a merit badge for an interception tonight. And here's the give to the right side. Not much there for Dallas Perrin as he's bottled up in the backfield. But we've got a penalty marker at the 30-yard line. Milo Aviles from Huntington Beach, 5'6", 165. You talked about him a moment ago. And you know what Scott Meyer told me? In practice, they couldn't block him. He's a little slant nose guard, and he's so quick that he gets in the backfield and the center doesn't get his license number. See, 5'6", 165, Bill, defensive nose man. We have a quick second here. We'd like to tell you a little bit about one of our big sponsors for this game, Western Youth Services. They've been providing counseling and mental health services for children, youth, and adults since 1972. Staffed by a dedicated team of mental health professionals who understand the unique concerns of children, adolescents, and families, and I'm going to give you their website here. Oh, 
Joe Moore in at quarterback. Uh, Joe out of Santa Ana Valley, played for his father. Joe had an outstanding year with 18 touchdowns, 1,651 yards. There are the numbers on Joseph as he gets instructions from Coach De Palma from Catella High School's brought prominence back to the Knights. That's Good some to great see stats some there, of these Central County teams, Garden Grove, Catella, getting back and becoming relevant on the football field. So Go Bill, ahead, tell Coach. us just more to about finish this, up uh, on the, uh, Western Youth Services. If you'd like to learn more about what they do, their website is www.westernyouthservices.org. And I'll tell you what, uh, the proceeds from this event tonight are going right. to the Western Youth Services. Let's go downstairs for uh, more on tonight's game, the sponsorship, and how this thing all comes together. Phil Anton and Bob Gibson. Gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Phil, you know, so much goes into putting this game together. You know, you're not doing it for the money. You're not doing it uh, you know, for the notoriety. You do it for the love of it every year, correct? Hey, thank you for sports. I love football. Uh, these are my brothers, and it makes a lot of fun. Good way to raise money for charities, Bob. You know, we know you played in this game, uh, you know, a few years ago, correct? Yeah, yeah. A long time ago, about half a century ago. <laughs> what do you try to impart upon these kids, you know, about their experience and maybe the experience you had, you know, some years ago? Well, some of the guys I played with and against, one guy I played against was the best man in my wedding, okay? And uh, you take it on to college, you grow from it, and you always come back and you embellish your stories, how much better you played than you did. You know, it's a great thing. And these fans here in the stands are going to remember watching their sons or daughters and they were going to play in their last high school game. You know, we see the game program. There's a lot of guys in there with famous names that have gone to play professional football over the years. The Olympic gold medalists, people like that. But I imagine you run into kids that come back and say, hey, I played in this. And maybe I didn't go on to be a famous person, but you know, they gained something out of this and became a good person. They did. It's all athletic world things aren't always fair one thing about football it's like Darwinism survival of the fittest and you learn to work hard and benefit from your hard work and come out and say you played with a John Ward or Tony Gonzalez or Deshaun Foster and you knew him when uh, that means something too. Bill we want to congratulate you again on another great game and uh, good well, luck I and keep it going. Plug. Teammate 54 years Oldest high school all-star game in California, third oldest in the nation, because they've been doing it. And without those guys opening the hole for the rest of us, and the charities uh, wouldn't get the notoriety, raise the funds, and what a beautiful day here at Orange Coast. Hey, thanks again. On half of Time Warner Cable, we want to thank you as well. Thank you and Time Warner. Okay, back upstairs to you guys. I want to thank Phil Anton for all his efforts and helping us uh, get prepared for tonight's game. Tireless. In terms of his preparation, here's Alex Staff on the return, takes the short hop out to midfield. And the South will put it in play, first down and 10. Brought down by Hayden Paul Dunn from El Dorado High School. While that interview was going on with Phil Anton, Garrett Marino made another classic play, uh, things that uh, he did all of last season in leading that Mission Viejo defense. He really uh, has to be double teamed. I don't think you can play a game and single block him at this point. That's a gutsy uh, carry for Alex Staff that time from Tribuco Hills, taking that ball on a crazy bounce. Now, instead of the trips formation, the South team in a two by two set, which gives the quarterback a little bit more versatility and it may open up the run game. Torgerson will keep it himself. That's a good uh, show of sportsmanship there by the South. Nice job there by Zach Cornwell helping up one of the North members. You know, this thing got out of control a few years ago and coaches and the referees and, and, and Phil Anton and his team have really emphasized these young men. It's not necessarily about uh, the name on the front, it's about the name on the back and just remember who you're representing. You get family, friends, and potentially a scholarship offer and coaches out here see stuff oh, like no. that. And that. No that, question. If you're a bubble guy, that could be the difference. They don't want troublemakers. Nice. Staff on the receiving end, first down to the 35-yard line. I agree with you on that. Kevin, when Hold you get a 4-3 defense, and Vinny, you've seen this your whole playing career, the vulnerable spot in the 4-3 is the hole in between sure. the safeties beyond the Mike linebacker. Wide open. What they're doing right now is just taking those two slots, running them vertically for about eight yards, and then what we used to call a find-it route. Just get in the middle, 
So we now call them dirty routes, right, Kevin? Back Not necessarily back anything you've seen before, just get open. First down and 10 from the 35 yard line. Here comes trouble. Cody White is open. Oh, a one-hander, oh, and he no. cannot pull it down. Oh, wow, Cody that White. That was beautiful. What an effort there by Cody White. He just snared that one-handed. Could Look, not land it, though. It yeah, looked I, like that ball stuck in there, didn't it, Bill? I'll tell you something about this young man. Wow. He ended up his career at El Toro High School as the second leading receiver in Orange County history. That's and I'll tell you awesome. what, he, he's a fabulous route runner. A tremendous basketball player, but just a, a wonderful all-around young man, a great student. And you saw what Torgerson did, that little pump fake, really opened that, that route up for, for Cody running up the sideline. 72 catches, almost 1,000 yards, and that was last season. Season before that, he even had a better year. Oh. He had over 180 receptions, second all-time in the history of Orange County as a receiver, Cody White. That time, Torgerson had the back out of the backfield. Martinez running up and just taking a, a look and see. Nobody in the middle of the field as an option. Boy. You know, when quarterbacks do that, saying, my bad, my bad, uh, I always looked on that as a sign of respect. That yeah, quarterback, that, that's great. you got to take it on your shoulders. You see what Trevon Coley did. He and White are going at it all night tonight, and, and Coley came over and helped uh, Cody White on the opposite side fix his shoulder pads. That's, that's what's great about this game. Going across the middle, wide open in the end zone for the touchdown of Scott Beautiful. Hoover. Beautiful high-low read on that safety. Great, great anticipation by the quarterback. He threw that ball before he ever got open. He saw the safety jump the curl route, and he went right over his Beautiful. head to the post. I'm telling you, he's got, he's got the arm, he's got the anticipation, he's got the savvy. He can, he's going to do a lot of great things for Penn. How about this, Kevin? That's got to be the first touchdown reception by any athlete from San Juan Hills High School. First time, How history maker. Scott Hoover is only a four year letterman at San Juan Hills. He gets loose wow. into the secondary. So Beautiful we talked about throw, that. nice pitch and catch. Talked about that safety coming up, Kevin. KT, safety comes up, wide receivers open over the top. Griff Amy's on to attempt the extra point. Tied a state record last year with consecutive field goals. Last year was magical for Corona Del Mar. 22 field goals last year, first team All-American. You know, Vinny, seven to three. Take a timeout, just under five minutes to go. The South on top of the North, seven to three. Seven to three, south on top of the north, entertaining football, hard hitting football. They're now starting to get a good cadence yes. on both sides of the of the football tonight, guys. Normally takes about a quarter, quarter and a half to get your football legs under you, get hit again. But Vinny, I was gonna tell you when KT played at Arizona State, his nickname was Denny's. That's because <laughs> he that's because he was no. open twenty four hours a day. <laughs> Come on. Denny's is nice. A oh, oh. nice delay move there on the kickoff return. I like that. Great effort there by Julian Moss from Foothill High School. Both of those brothers, the Moss brothers, going to Saddleback next year. Five play, 50-yard drive, only a minute and 23 seconds, which is kind of typical of a spread option team. But a 35-yard touchdown That's Scott Meyer's pass. offense right there, and I think got beautiful, excellent play at quarterback there. Both quarterbacks are excellent. They're going to really go on and do some great things in college. You know, KT and I are at practice the other day, standing next to Torgerson, 6'3", 210. I think that number's low. He looks to me he like he's more like 225, yeah, too. He's bigger, too. First down and 10. Out of the Wildcat, here's a Pace, and he's got nowhere to go now. And oh, that's Vizcaya, rather. Joshua in the backfield. And off the other side, a guy that had a phenomenal phenomenal senior year. Trent Nashoff from Edison, 6'5", 230 pounder. Played at Tesoro about three years ago, but uh, last year for Edison, he was unbelievable. Kevin Brown also there from University High School. Mark Cunningham's defensive lineman running back, 5'9", 190. 
Good recognition this time coming up from the edge, J.T. Land. We loved watching J.T. Land play football at Tribuco Hills, a three-year superstar for Scott Orloff and his staff. He's a physical specimen. Can't wait to follow his career in college. He's also going to Penn. He's an Ivy Leaguer as well, so he'll join Torgerson at Penn. Third down and 12. Moore throws tall, this one too high for intended receiver, and he was looking for it's Joseph in. Inda there. Well, Inda got his hand on it, but you know who had a beat on that ball? Your man shot. When he did the Capo Valley games last year, wow. we'd look at that Jeff shot, and we'd say shot out of a cannon. Yeah. I'll tell you what, when he comes up in the secondary, he brings the lumber. Joe Moore put a pretty nice touch pass on that just, just beyond the reach, just right off his fingertips. Here, I believe, is the hardest thing in the world for an all-star coach, and that is special teams. <laughs> Here's your you Nebraska boy back here, Bill. substituting everywhere. Now, I watched him in practice. They can run a reverse off this punt return. Nice high kick by Barr, and Drake Martinez will, he fumbles the football, and it's on the turf, and he's able to go back and retrieve it. Yeah, a little extracurricular activity. This time they shut it down very quickly, and I like the action there by Steve Heyman and his staff coming over there to get in the middle of it. And Reed Andrew from Santa Margarita just walks away from it. Uh, very well disciplined. Harry Welch, disciple, number 24, played cornerback for that uh, 2011 CIF championship team. You know, it's it's kind of fun in an all-star game to pick someone out that you've seen play before and watch him in one-on-one -on -one situations. And that guy that you talked about earlier, Joshua Huff from Garden Grove, 6'3 and 245 pounds. He's number 88. As we look at them on TV, he'll be the left side defensive end. And he's in a pretty good battle with Zach Cornwell, the offensive lineman from Newport Harbor. Robert Murtha in the backfield, quick snap throw. Nice throw. Far side of the formation, and not much there. Look, is that Kevin Norman from Northwood? The it quarterback? Sure is. Yeah, Kevin Norman there on the receiving end, and he's dropped by Nathan Fleming from Troy High School. Now, we watched Kevin play quarterback at Northwood, but in an all-star game like this, I'm sure Rick Curtis nominated him as an athlete. Sure, that's Say, a great idea. This guy deserves to play in the game. Put him wherever you want to Norman's put him. playing the slot receiver. Vince, look, they've changed from cover two now, dropping down into a eight-in-the-box defense. Second down and short. Torgerson's got nowhere to go, pulls it down, and he's going to fight for some additional yardage he's on close second to the first down, down and three. He's going to be pretty close, Vince. Yeah, looks like he got it. It looks to me like Fred De Palma is going to deny the short pass. He's going to get up and say, all right, no more hitches. But, but I that, know that last play, Bill, was so beautifully thrown with time route with Torgerson and that little slot, that little stop route. I mean, that ball was released before he even turned around. There's Lanny Boer from Anaheim. We were talking, I was talking to Lanny before the game. He still has some very fond memories of that night here uh, yes. five years ago with the Kennedy Fighting Irish and the Anaheim Colonists, just an old school Anaheim Union High School District CIF final. That was a lot of fun. We did that uh, game that night. Mitch Olson got the championship ring. You know, kid that uh, played in that game, um, I had a chance to coach at combine training. Eddie Pleasant, Oregon star, who's now in the NFL. But uh, I just remember what a special night that was, bringing back the Anaheim glory days. There's Kevin Hedig there, working the offensive side, shuttling the plays in. Hedig and O'Shea, two of the finest assistant coaches in Orange County, Absolutely, in my opinion. Absolutely, no question about that. Torgerson got time, now here comes the pressure up the middle. And coming in to clean things up is Masoy. And also in there defensively, we've, this is the fifth tackle solo tonight for Fioa. Smart timeout there with less than two minutes to go in the game. Look at, look at Fioa. Oh, Fioa. 85 tackles, six sacks, an interception. Doing uh, it all, doing it all, Bill. When we were in the locker room, Vince, that was a young man who was getting taped and you know, you walk by and we just said, hey, good luck tonight, have fun in the game. And it's always these kinds of all-star kids. He said, thank you, sir, I appreciate that. And uh, I think so many of these guys have learned that 
perhaps this is the ultimate team game. One guy certainly can't do it. Remember watching, uh, oh, this has got to be 10, 12 years ago now, a young man from Los Alamitos High School playing that nose tackle position. A little smaller in stature, Mike Patterson. Yes. He's gone on to an unbelievable career at USC and with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I remember sitting in there with some other high school coaches to remain nameless. That guy, they said, he'll never play at SC. And I said, that yeah. guy has got a motor that won't quit. Don't ever tell that guy he can't do anything. You know the name Ed Orgeron, the defensive line coach at SC who recruited Mike Patterson. He coached at the University of Miami and he coached a guy there named Warren Sapp. And he called Patterson from the first day he met him, Baby Sapp. And Mike is still playing in the NFL. You bet he is. Do you remember what he did in that All-Star game that night? He scored a touchdown. They put him in the backfield, everybody's dream. Vinny. Well, that's something said to be guy with desire, do whatever Run he wants. Run away. Torgerson around the corner, across midfield, and he ducks out of bounds and hit a late little hit. late by Pau. I don't know about that because he was hit in bounds. His intent was to go out of bounds, but he was still in bounds when he made contact. I think the officials, again, led by Steve Heyman, the official, they're always going to err on the side of let's keep this thing under control. You're going to see Mana Pau come into your picture in just a second. And it looks like Torgerson at this point decides, okay, I'm going to take it out of bounds. Well, but maybe you know what? Not. It's I think it's really difficult unless you've played Personal this foul game. Yeah. defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, the first down. To understand how hard it is when you're trying to cover a guy, you're not looking at the boundary, you're looking to stop the guy. And and I've had workouts with Monapau. He's one of the nicest kids you could ever meet. That's just a good football uh, player. You know what? Good call by the official. My bad. Okay, the South, a little bit of a drive with a minute and 21 seconds. Officials have to protect the quarterback, fellas. Spoken like a <laughs> <Okay>. true quarterback. <laughs> in the 31-yard line, penalty marker on the play. Torgerson's going to dump nice it off throw. to Teupa in the flat 25. And inside the 15-yard line. Now, First down, if, but we've got a marker back here, fellas, yeah. at the 31-yard line. If you notice what Hedig is doing with this offense, they always swing the back. They always have an outlet. Great outlet. So you can look up the field at your four wide receivers, but you always have the check down. And in this case, checking down to number two, Teapu from Newport Harbor, that's a good thing. Now why is that, why is that swing route such a great outlet route, Bill? Well, if you've got two receivers on that side, Vince, and you're running either double verticals or double slants, the linebacker gets pulled inside and if the corner doesn't squat, linebacker's the guy that's supposed to take that running back and uh, watch and see if they don't do it again down here. Swing the back. He checks, now he's open again. There he is, if he wants it, or become a blocker. Well done by Torgerson as yep. he gets inside the five yard line, coach. Yes, he does. He's got to come out of the game because his helmet came off. Look how but smart Kamen is. Kamen's right, right there. In. You know what you're looking at is baby Tebow here. They're going to call a timeout. And if if I'm not mistaken in this rule, if a timeout is called, I believe the same guy can come back in the game. If there's a timeout, we'll find out. Do you think he's a, another version of Tim Tebow? Um, I, I I hate to say this, but I like his throwing motion better than Tim's. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. Tim can take a couple lessons at the know way what? he throws the football. Tim has worked with a whole bunch of different guys, most recently Chris Wanky, and Matt Barkley went down there to work with Chris before this year's draft. And Wanky, who I really respect, said that when he sent Tebow off to the Patriots, he said, trust me, this guy can play quarterback in the NFL. And Wanky won a Heisman Trophy and played in the league for 10 yeah. years. The quarterback from Florida State. Yes, but he yeah. he just, you know how he used to kind of dip it in the bucket and throw? Yeah. He cleaned all that up, and you might say the guy's a great athlete. I mean, figure it out. I think if I had him, he'd be on the field even if it was being a center. I'll tell you what, Lanny Boer's got his game face on tonight. <laughs> So here's Cayman Carter. He'll be the uh, quarterback here coming out of the timeout, and he'll climb under center, second down and short. Turn and give miscue in the backfield, and this one's going to go the other way. Teupa 
bottled up in the backfield there. Manapau there, number four in the backfield. That was just miscommunication by the quarterback and the running back there. Kevin, this is what happens, and, and we see it in combine training. I'll get quarterbacks that have been in the shotgun for eight years, Vinny. And they four get in high center, school, and they, four in college, and you put the them in the center, are different. and they haven't worked on that stuff. Yeah. So what you get is an I-formation team, and some of these guys haven't played in the I-formation. They're all spread option teams. So Scott Meyer's going to exercise a timeout. They'll talk this one over. There's Lanny Boer right there. He dialed it up. You know who Lanny looks like? I'm going to just throw a name out if you look in the NFL. That's Jim Haslett. Or Bobby Beathard. Or Bobby Beathard. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Former. Lanny's terrific coach. He really is. And now, if you have third and ten. Did you say Haslett? And yeah, and you've got 39 seconds left. You're telling your quarterback, do not throw an interception down here. And I know that's negative coaching, but I'm gonna say if I don't have something I like, throw the ball away and let's kick a field. They goal. have no timeouts left either. You're right, yep. coach. 39 seconds remaining. Torgerson looking. Nice defensive effort. I'll tell you what, Moss is an outstanding defensive back. We Excellent saw him play. against Laguna Hills. Good, I yeah. didn't know how good he was because I didn't That's really awesome. think the competition, who he was playing against, was top shelf competition. Tonight he is, and he's a standout player. He is. You know, I, most uh, definitely. Mark McElroy's pretty excited to get both of those kids. And that's Foothill High School. You go, where do you play him? Do you play him on offense? I, the way he's playing tonight, I'd put him at corner immediately. <laughs> Griff Amy's 26 yarder. Here's the no kick rush. on the way, and it's no good. So Amy's misses, Mr. Reliable, cannot convert here in the final moments of the second quarter, and we'll stay at 7 3. You know, one of the things about that, oops, we'll be back right after this. So the North defense, guys hold serve. Had a couple of missed field goals tonight on both sides. 29 seconds left. Joe Moore in at quarterback, and he'll pull it down and run towards the near sideline. And tapped out of bounds there by JT Land from Tribuco Hills High School. Well, the North has three timeouts, uh, but when you're predominantly a running type of team, kind of a little bit tough to, with 23 seconds, move that ball. But they're going to have to throw the ball here, Bill. You know what you don't want to do now, 23 seconds, you do not want to turn this ball over down here. So you kind of have to make a decision. We're either throwing safe passes, or in this case, Vince, I used to love to throw screens at this point. You know, defense is dropping off to prevent anything deep. I'd throw the ball deep. <laughs> it's like, we got to score. See what Joe Moore can dial up here. Moore in trouble, flushed, and now he's going to go down at the 20-yard line. Oh, Good backside quick. pressure there, and that's uh, our man. Kevin Brown from University High School there coming in off the backside. Great pressure. And again, if you fear a quarterback, that clock in your head has to say, when it's about 2.8, I need to do something. Either throw it away or take off and run. That's going to be the That'll final do it. play of the first half, a very competitive first half of football. Total of yards just about even. The South with 135 yards and the North with about 115. So. Been a very physical first half of football, gentlemen. Well, I think the offensive line have, have lacked the, uh, uh, the power to actually, you know, contain any drives and actually stop the defensive line. The defensive line has seemed to be overpowering on both sides of the football. Well, I'd agree with that, Vince. I think when Kevin said this early on, this is a, a very physical all-star game. But I'll tell you what, if you're a football player like these guys, they are literally weeks away from starting their college seasons. So... Use this as a springboard, jump off, and get ready to go because not only do they represent Orange County in their high schools, these are guys we're going to see on Saturdays all across the nation. They got some zone blocking techniques with the zone read, and then on the other side with the, uh, the double wing, you've got some rules and responsibilities, guys jumping around. And like you said, Vince, this, this both offensive lines tonight lack that continuity. Yeah, I think so. And that, a lot of it has to do with the time 
in the experience of playing with each other, but you have a lot of great individual players out here. And given time, any of these two teams could, I mean, they could just do whatever they want. But a lot of these guys are going to show something big uh, at, their, at their respective colleges. All right, let's head downstairs, get an update uh, from Bob Gibson. He's with the coach, Fred De Palma from the North. Gentlemen. Great, thanks, guys. Coach, uh, you, you told me last week that uh, you're going to run a little bit of a modified version of your offense, but uh, that wrinkle you threw first play was that was that part of the modification? Well, we, yeah, no, it's whatever. We just we thought we'd throw it in and have fun with it, but it did work. But unfortunately, we didn't. We got bogged down. But yeah, we just I mean, honestly, their their defensive line is is controlling offensive line. We just got to do a better job up front. We our pass protection has not been good. Our timing's a little off, but we have guys open, but we're just not able to get the ball. We just not enough time so we'll keep, we'll keep plugging away we'll make some adjustments and see what happens what did you see that you like from your team in the first half oh they're persistent i mean our defense was awesome they did great um i mean they're they're tackling really well on defense i mean they're going to the ball offensively we're, we're trying to do the right things we're just stalling here and there if we can put the pieces together i think we're gonna have a good second half thanks appreciate it go get them in the second half thank you thank you all right back upstairs kt coach and vince here we got a close ball game the 54th edition of the orange county high school all-star game halftime festivities coming up next 7-3 south on top of the north And welcome back to the 54th annual Bray Lions Club Orange County Prep All-Star Game on Time Warner Cable. Down on the field, joined by some very special guests. I have Dr. Lori Lay on my right. She's the CEO and Executive Director with Western Youth Services. And to my left, this is Fred Diavla, who's on the Board of Directors with Western Youth Services. All right, Dr. Lay, let's start with you. Let's talk about, uh, since 1972, a long-standing tradition in the community. Let's talk about the great work you're doing in the community, uh, the mission statement, and all about Western Youth Services. Great. Well, we uh, provide a full range of mental health services for children and families from prevention and early intervention all the way to intensive mental health services for children who've been removed from their homes due to abuse and neglect. And over the last year, we've uh, provided services to over 15,000 children, and, uh, and that was about three times as many as last year. So it's been a really uh, great opportunity. Wow, those are amazing numbers. And are there any specific programs you'd like to highlight this evening? Well, we have a great school-based program called Jumpstart, and basically we go in and provide mental health professionals right on the school campuses to provide anti-bullying programs and other kinds of prevention programs and build protective factors in youth, and it's an awesome, awesome program. Awesome. Well, I know she's a big fan of the game, but get a, get a close look at this. So, Lori, if you could turn around. She has her jersey on tonight, Dr. Lay, and she's the number one fan. That's why you don't even need a number. So, But I, I know you're not picking a winner. You like both teams from the north and south. Absolutely. We appreciate that the Bray Alliance allow us to benefit from the proceeds of the game. So both teams, absolutely, we're... We're, we're rooting for both of them. Outstanding. Okay, now back to the football field here, Fred. I, you're a big fan of the game, and what can you say about the opportunity for these young men out on the football field to play the role of role model for Western Youth Services? Well, you know, as we uh, prepared for this game, we, we have a parent uh, a meeting with the, the players, and one of the things we emphasize is sort of this rite of passage. You know, people have been in your court cheering for you. Well, this is a charity game. This is your chance to step forward and make a difference for other kids who are less fortunate. These are young men. They're great. And the closer you get to them and the more you know them, they're not just football players. They're great young men. I'm really encouraged for the future and not only the game, of course, but the future of this county. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great work that you're doing here this evening. And uh, to reach out and learn more about Western Youth Services, contact their website. It's westernyouthservices.org. Stay with us. Coming up, we're going to have highlights and some stats from the first half of the 54th annual Brea Lions Club Orange County Prep All-Star Game right here on Time Warner Cable. Thanks, Carl. Welcome back to our halftime here. Time Warner Cable Sports presents the North-South Orange County All-Star High School Football Extravaganza. The South on top of the North tonight, gentlemen, 7-3. to three. And as we mentioned going into the half, a very physical first half of football. Well, I think it's been the two, the two defensive lines, Vinny, that have dominated this game. And as you mentioned early on, the hardest thing to coordinate in 14 practices is good offensive line play. 
Those defensive guys can freelance a little bit. The other thing is the quarterbacks on both sides have run the ball effectively. And uh, I think the pass defense on both sides has been excellent. I like Alex Torgerson running the football, Vince. He T-boat a few guys out there earlier tonight. Big, strong, can run. He's got the whole package. But I think what's going to have to happen a little bit, they're going to have to solidify the passing protection for the quarterback and keep a few more guys in. Sometimes when you keep more guys in, you get a better pass protection, only release two, maybe three at the most sometimes in receivers. And so uh, far, I think we'll see it My MVP, Isaac Fio, the, the nose tackle tonight on the on the north side, he's been dominant. Or Moss on the defensive back side. Yeah. It's been a really exciting and physical first half of football. Let's take a look at the highlights. Gentlemen, right here we get things started. Little chicanery to start the ball game and pace is on the receiving end, 65 yards and Reed Andrew from Santa Margarita finally reeling in pace. That's first and goal and then the North stalls inside. They can't get anything going. They miss a field goal and then Pace comes back. They threaten once again. Pace makes a nice open move there in the field. They turn the ball over and here's Pau right there on the defensive side and they get the football back. That intended for Cody White, Manu Pau from Servite High School. Then Torgerson scrambling, showing his athleticism. We spoke about it earlier. Here's Torgerson, he gets popped out of bounds and they'll tack on 15 additional yards. Look at this effort by Cody White here. He cannot reel it in. And that's been sort of the tail of the tape tonight. Close, but no cigar. And we've got a seven to three ball game tonight. Let's take a look at our halftime stats, gentlemen. The rushing yards, 57 for the South, 24 for the North. The passing yards, very close. Total yards, a little advantage for the South team. The amazing stat to me for a high school all-star game, one turnover. I think that's remarkable. And the time of possession is almost equal. So we've seen a great defensive effort by both sides. But now they've played a half of football. It's been seven months since they've strapped it up. But this is the second half of these high school all-star games seems to always be when the stars come out. That's when all the fireworks happen. Second half, but uh, I, I think you're right. The North had a couple opportunities early in the game. Couldn't cash in on any touchdowns, but uh, it'll be a different second half. Evenly matched game, evenly matched series. Let us remind you, this series tied at 25 wins apiece and three ties. Tonight, we'll find out who the icebreaker is. Is it going to be the North? Is it going to be the South? Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll have the second half kickoff right here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Welcome back, just moments away from halftime. The South on top of the North, seven to three. Great ball game tonight here at Orange Coast College. Kevin Turner along with the coach, Bill Kennedy and Vince Ferragamo. James Covarrubias working their side. Greg Battersby spotting up here in the booth. Let's go down to the sideline. Garth Wyckoff is with Scott Meyer. Coach, physical game here in the first half. Defensive battle, but could be expected in an all-star game. Wait for these guys to find their rhythm. What was the message to the players there in the locker room, and how do we open up the playbook here offensively in the second half? Yeah, you're right. I think the defense in an all-star game like this has the advantage. Uh, our defense is playing well. They gave up the, the trick play, but they settled in, and, and we feel like our offense settled in the uh, towards the end of the first quarter and into the second quarter. So we'll open it up a little bit and uh, see what happens in the second half. Okay, no one's listening, so are we going to see any trick plays on the south side in the second half? I think you might. Ah, there it is. Thanks for your time. Good luck right, in the second half. Slide. All right, let's go back upstairs to the booth with KT and the boys. Scott Meyer, Corona Del Mar's finest, two consecutive back-to-back -back CIF championships. And there's talk around Sea King country that these guys, this group coming in next year, they may be the best group yet. And they're talking, some people are whispering about a state championship. Well, when you look at what uh, Scott and his staff have done in their first two years together, it's quite remarkable. Back-to-back -back CIF championships, and we saw those current Corona Del Mar guys practice last week, and I'll tell you what, it's an impressive-looking group. And it's a young staff. Yes, they are. They're, you know, uh, so, I mean, it, th these guys are very well coordinated. They work well together. And like anything else, I mean, if yeah. you're a coaching staff, you're all on the right page. I mean, it's, it's so much you, better to work with. I'll tell you how old I am. When Kevin Hedig was born, I was there. I mean, his dad and I played high, played baseball in the and summers are, together. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but they know their football, well, coach. When you look at this, and, and Kevin, we've watched the evolution of father and son combinations, the Johnsons with Bob, the Barnes family, 
as I look at these young coaches, Danny O'Shea and Kevin Hedig are two of the best young coordinators in high school football. But that's not rare. That happens all the time now. There's Coach Doyle, played for Bruce Rollinson, was part of the 1994 National Championship team at Modern Day High School. And may you talk about the lineage of these great coaches and the pedigree that they're leaving behind. It's quite impressive. And you know, you look at Corona Del Mar and you say, you know, back to back, and it, the future's only brighter because what's going on at the lower levels, the freshman level, their freshman teams have gone undefeated the last three years in a row. Julian Moss is going to He wanted to take, take that knee. out, didn't yeah, he? There, he gave a little deke move, a little delay, and then thought better of it. And it'll be first down and 10 for the North as we start the second half of play. South on top, seven to three. When that young man goes on and he's gonna play at Saddleback College with his brother, you're not just getting a one position guy. If he's gonna play corner, you're also getting a punt and kickoff return guy, and you're getting a pretty good special teams player in the bargain. Oh yeah, with Moss. Oh my, he can do a lot of stuff. Only 155 pounds, 5'10", but got great feet, wonderful hips. He can really open up, and he's got a nice top end and good recovery speed for Julian Moss and can play both sides of the football. Here's the handoff, Vizcaya turning the corner and getting up the field. I like how he gets his shoulders up the field yeah. in north and south. Does a nice job, gentlemen, finishing the run. I like his body lean, Bill, when he runs the football. He turns up the field and he go turns up with power, which is a great attribute for a running back. When you listen to great running back coaches, John Robinson, as good a running back coach as yeah. there is, he, knows the he would game. tell those kids, and you probably heard this when you were with him with the Rams, put your foot in the ground, make one cut, and go. go. Another quick pass. Quick snap throw near side, and that's Dallas Parent. And Parent gets up the field in a hurry, and Reed Andrews there defensively from Santa Margarita High School, along with the Nick Crouch from Tesoro. So, you know what? He's not going to get enough, enough credit for this. But the reason that play worked so well was Shad Pace, number 11, the other receiver who came blocked. inside and blocked the corner. Exactly. Got a little bubble screen, yeah. but it's quick execution. And the ball was being delivered. Nice throw by the quarterback to get the ball out fast. On first down, pressure, here it comes. And there's Garrett Marino from Mission Viejo High School. He's got to be one of the best defensive linemen I've seen play in the last decade and a half at the high school level. You know, when you talked a little bit about Mike Patterson, and, and the name that comes to mind for me is Travis Kersky, who played at Esperanza High School, UCLA, and was in the NFL for 14 years. Uh, just somebody that literally on the high school level you cannot block. Right. He's a beast. He's tough. And he has the ability as a sure tackler. He hits you really flush over the middle, batted down right at the line of scrimmage. And uh, Anderson, 4.3 GPA, Westminster High School, and uh, Stoddard there, another one of uh, Bob Johnson's pupils playing tonight. I don't know if you noticed that, Kevin and Vince, but you know what they did to Marino that time? Tackle posted him and the back chipped. They bring an extra guy, and, and you can count on that maybe, uh, in this case, maybe the tight end in the tackle. Here comes Marino again. Anderson's in trouble, and Marino's got him from behind. My goodness, what a talented football player number 99 is. Great at the power of the point of attack. Great at chasing a play down from behind. And like we said, not one guy can block him. So you're going to have to really be careful when you game plan against a well, guy like that. That's a gift. How many kids that size have you ever seen run that fast? No, that's a that's, uh, and he's going well, we to gray him in shirt. high school play fullback sure. as well, Bill. And he's he's going to gray tough shirt and then go into Arizona State probably at the semester. Explain what that is. He is going to enroll in less than 12 units, which would allow him not to use a year of eligibility. And then he could actually start his academic career days at Arizona State next spring. That ball bounced off. That's a yeah, first down. Yes, that ball bounced off one of the receivers. And the North recovered it. You have to communicate on that punt and tell everybody, especially when they have their back to the ball, where it is to locate the ball. Watch as this bounces right off number 24 
and he's blocking at the time. Did you ever have a call for that, Vince? We used to, our guy, if the punt was short, yeah. It yeah. went off a 28, that's Hayden Paul Dunn. It went off of his shoulder. Yeah. Now, did it hit the hand of the South player? That's what they're probably saying because it looked like it well, went off the back of a, a North player. Let me tell you what the very best thing in this whole situation is. Look at the officials getting together that's, to make sure they get it right. That's great. And Again, let's talk about that crew. Steve Heyman, the referee, the umpire, Mark Harrison, head linesman Martin Covarrubias, line judge Lance Orloff, and back judge Reed Corvo. There's Lance uh, Orloff, Scott Orloff's brother, who's the head coach at Tribuco They're gonna Hills. slow it down and see if you see it hit the hand of the South player. It this is the a shoulder. Not, this, this is look, great camera work, guys. Wow, this is looks wonderful. like it may have just hit the back you of know, the North player. That, so that kind of camera work, Vinny, that would have been you running down the field full speed. Yeah. It would have looked it. like slow motion. That's right. <laughs> they got to put it down real slow. <laughs> Make me look fast. There's Brad Bond there. He's going to be the offensive coordinator just on the uh, right side of Scott Meyer talking. He's moving over to Beckman High School. Good so for you Brad. So you say they're going to reverse this decision. Yes, yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. I see the uh, south offense is out there. There's no flag on the there. Therefore, if it's touching, it'll be white ball going this way. If you couldn't okay. hear all of that, he said that the ball hit the kicking team first, and the ball's going to be dead at first touching. So if the kicking team touches it wherever they are, right. the ball's dead at that spot. Tell you what, this crew's done a fantastic job tonight, Coach. Well, they really have done a great job of officiating, keeping the game under control. And there's a classy guy. I just love Fred DePalm. I think he's a tremendous football coach, but he's listening to the officials saying, you guys are out there close to it, and you made the call. Let's let's play on. So Cayman Carter will start the second half for the Corona Del Mar Sea Kings out of the shotgun. Carter's going to keep it himself. Nice move across midfield, and he has walloped as he cuts back, and he was hit hard by James Ferraro, the outstanding cornerback from Servite High School, also an excellent pole vaulter on the track team, and James is very athletic, and He's been one of the most consistent defensive players in the Trinity League for the last two years. This is why you don't want your quarterback running the ball very the, often. The difference in this offense now, guys, they've gone to two backs and three wide receivers. It's just a whole different look. Now, here's a problem. If you're gonna run, if you're gonna run the scissors play, Vince, where the backs cross, yes. you can't all meet at the quarterback. No, no. <laughs> Well, Robert, well, especially when you're not getting any movement from the defensive right. line. Penetration I mean, you throw the destroy. football. Penetration will destroy that Throw play. screen. Let him come in. Robert Murth on the wrong side of that one. All right, now they're back to single back, four wides. See if they don't attack the middle of the field here. Against the zone. There it is, coach. Beautiful catch right there. What a throw. That's a perfect you throw called by it. Cayman That's Carter. Hoover again. But, wow. You know Hoover's what? come up with big plays on the post route. If you do wow. this for a long time, when you stand up here, you see by position what's open. The post in this route, I think Kevin Hedding saw this too, but look at this throw. That's a 44-yard reception there. You see that safety come up. That's an indication for the quarterback to let the ball go deep down the middle. And both quarterbacks have done a great job. That time, Cayman Carter threw a beautiful ball. Great hang time. Allowed Hoover to get under it. I'm sure June Jones will get a chance to look at this tape at some point. Wow. Wow, that's close. There's that. a conference call in the backfield right there by the North. Good penetration. Nathan pow Fleming and pow Ooh. You know what? That looked uh, like it was a blitz, and it could have been because the ball was on the 10-yard line. This Servite linebacker, Pau, can play a little bit, boys. Down I mean, here, the rules say that you can do anything you want on defense, and uh, I think they might fudge it out to about the 12-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> out of the gun, Carter looking fade route corner of the end zone, looking for Robinson. Cole and Robinson. he has. He's got the ball, and I think he's no going to call pass yet. interference, too. I didn't see any one, first, either one of the officials. No. First, there has to be a signal if it's a catch or not. 
He has to possess the ball through contact with the They're ground. They're going to call it offensive pass I like the I huddle. Believe. I like the referee huddle because not one guy is responsible. They have a, you know, a, yeah. a group decision as to what happened. You know, if there's no signal of a catch right, that's by the, the best thing judge, for to do. I'm thinking this could be on the offense. Yes, it is. Pass interference on the offense. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty throw by Kalen Carter again. It was. Take Here's a, a fade route, quick is, throw. Now that had to happen before we had our camera on it because this looks like a pretty good move by Cole Robinson. He's using a little bit of hands there, a little I bit don't of hand know. technique. I mean, he's just trying to didn't free, have he's possession trying to of the ball. Himself with a like a back backstroke. Spoken like a receiver, uh, okay. You know what? All you're doing is backstroking and getting That's separation. It. But what about the defensive back no, trying to cover? There was no palm and push off. <laughs> a big target, Cole Robinson. See, the only way I'd look at it, I used to give my quarterbacks ice cream cones for <laughs> touchdown passes. So quarterback draw. draw, but there's that great defensive line by the north again. In this case, Number 55 making that play, Eduardo Diaz from Valencia. Played for Mike Marujo at Valencia High School. And that was a, a really terrific play, getting off the block. Well, this is third and 29, what's your call, Coach? I, had, I didn't have a lot of third and 29 calls in my playbook. Well, I tell you, though, I mean, a okay, smart thing case, would be to if you can't get, let's get a little closer for a nice field goal. This is where I'd throw another screen. I love a screen to the back here. That's what they're trying, but the Carter finds some extra there he time. Is wide now open. here comes pressure from the backside, and Daniel Saichi there defensively, the all leaguer from Los Alamitos High School. Great pursuit by the defense that time. The quarterback has to look to do a check down real quick. He had his back in uh, for a short gain. Would have made a big difference uh, for this field goal attempt. But Kame is just coming out. He's looking deep. He's trying to get the ball deep. And there's, uh, he's there's got, Norman right yeah, there he's in the flat. He's got number 15, Kevin Norman, on yeah. the crossing route. And you mentioned something a minute ago. If he takes the shallow route, he's not going to get a first down, but your kicker has a chance. Right, you have a chance if to get, get a field goal. Then, uh, Give well, credit to that North defense for yeah, not right. giving up on that play. How about Daniel yeah, Seichi right there, one of Barry Sher's finest right there from Los Alamitos High School. And Barry can coach some defense. <laughs> He's a heck of an offensive coordinator back in the Long day time. during the uh, Kevin Federick era. Well, they, that Melsby. might have been fourth down. That's the reason why he was looking deep down the field. Bill, we thought it was third. Anderson, hands off. Trying to get loose is Tavi Jimerson from Orange Lutheran High School. There you see the quick feet of the 5, 695 pounder getting around the corner and up the field. And JT Land there finally defensively able to shove him out of bounds. There's now, a when you have a runner like that, Bill, you got to really start to feed him the ball a little bit on Jimerson because they get they start to get into this game and into the mode of running the football. And you almost see he broke away for a score there. So There's you really need a, to start feeding also, him the ball. Also, there's going to be a penalty on this play. It's going to move the ball all the way down to the 40-yard line. That was a horse collar tackle. And, Kevin, you remember you and I had a busman's holiday one Friday night, came here to watch Orange Lutheran and St. John Bosco. And we got to see Tavi Jimerson run against a great defense. And he how threw much, up about 140. How much you want to bet De Palma gives the ball to Jimerson? I'll bet you right now he gives the ball. Feed, feed the hungry dog, right? Well, Vizcaya. Vizcaya is not bad either. He's got some daylight. Vizcaya with a nice move on the perimeter, but Drake Martinez there able to reel him in. Well, I'll tell you, this thing's getting more physical. I love it. You know, I guess the best part about this, Kevin, is what you brought up in the open. 25 wins for the north, 25 for the south, three ties. You know, there's a... Good straight arm. Vinny, there's the midnight rule. And okay. that is no overtimes past midnight. I'm not sure that the people here would still be in we the We got stands, a little wildcat action right now. That's going to be backfield, in, the backfield in motion. They didn't call anything. And they caught him. Nice effort there. Boy, Coming up on the inside by you Jeff have, Nelson. There's uh, Garrett Marino as well. KT, thought, you uh, have Ashkoff and Marino on that left side. That is one tough place to run the football. So as you can see, the north is running primarily to the right side away from that. That's pretty smart coaching. <laughs> Tell you They've what, Marino 
Marino and Nelson, they've got to be two of the quickest guys on the football field for the first 10 yards off the ball. Middle screen and a great job on the middle screen by number 25, JT Land. Do you see him read the block, come up, escape inside the blocker and stop the middle screen? Just smart football players. That was the one underlying theme. We talked to both coaches all week long about the players and the one theme that just continued all week long was smart kid, yeah. hard working, yeah. yeah. dedicated, smart kid, smart kid, smart kid. And you see it tonight, these guys are in the right position at the right time. Well, I love the process now. It used to be that coaches selected these teams. Now these teams are being selected by the register and, and uh, I think they, they get to see all these kids play and so you get the best players, not necessarily maybe homegrown picks. Now, this is gonna be a, yeah, this is a 54 Three. yard attempt by Matthew Barr. Into the wind. And there, oh, well, that's delay gonna maybe ruin this because delay a game is gonna move it to a point where I'm not sure Fred De Palma is gonna wanna try and kick this. Because if you miss it, it comes right back to the point where the ball is spotted right now. And if, if they try to kick this one, it's gonna be close to 60 yards. Well, not unless he runs it out. If yeah, they, that, if that's it's true. short, can, they can run it that's out. That's right. And notice where those two guys are back there. Number five, Alex Staff and Drake Martinez are in the end zone. Now you have Vascaro now, and you have... You know what you better be aware Jim of right said here? It might be a fake. You better be aware of the fake. You better be aware of that shuffle pass with that guy coming off the edge. They're reading it. I think right now, Fred De Palma's staff decided, you know what, let's not turn the ball over here. Maybe a smart thing with 454 left in the third is punt the ball down into the corner of the end zone and let's see if we can give our defense some room to work. Coach, this is an all-star game. It's fourth and 13. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have, you're faced with that dilemma, Kevin. Would you rather have momentary ecstasy <laughs> or depression for eight months that you lost the game? <laughs> You remember, they've only had two weeks to practice, so they're kind of limited on what sure. they can po possibly run sure. as well. So, yeah, I think you're right. you got to jump you know in the me. punt in our, formation. In our two weeks, we put in 11 fake punts. Oh, wow. you know, you gotta well, I like the first play of the game. That was a nice trick play. That was beautiful. Play. So, Barr's going to line up. He'll try to pooch this. I believe he'll try to pooch it into the short side of the field. Look how far inside the, the gun protect is on the outside. They might be able to throw this one. Nice Look. directional kick. Oh, oh, unfortunately, nice that was too good a punt into the end zone. But I'll tell you what, absolutely beautiful technique by Matt Barr. He's a two-way two, uh, two kicker, punter and a place kicker. 448 to go in the third quarter. When we come back, the South will have the football leading 7-3 to three over the North. All right, welcome back to Orange Coast College. 448 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Cayman Carter back in at quarterback. Teupa gets the call on first down, left side, nowhere to go. Got a baseball score here tonight in the Orange County All-Star football game. <laughs> yeah, 7-3. to three. We're in the seventh inning. Well, you know in the 53-year history of this game, Kevin, there have been two 0-0 zero -zero ties, and it's almost like you want to refund the people's money. <laughs> but... You come to see a show, I think if you came tonight, you're a football fan, you're seeing great defense. Well, Pau's hitting for the cycle tonight. He's been everywhere. Carter, second uh -oh. down, throws. Cody White climbs the ladder and comes down with it at the 40 yard line. Finally tackled at the 45 yard line and brought down on the near side by Derek Anderson there defensively. That ball was thrown very Close. dangerously. But Cody White's used to catching those kind of balls. So, I mean, he's just so natural out there and just makes it look so easy. One he runs that hook yard. route, just this plain hook route. That's confidence. Tell you what, Kevin, as you know, you teach guys to catch the ball out in front of their eyes. That was a perfect example. Frame the ball. First down and 10 for the South. 7-3 to three lead. And there's a little miscommunication in the backfield again, but Carter figures it out. 
gets around the right side. He and Murth have had a tough time in the backfield well, tonight. Well, you know what happens is they're running a spread zone read, and perhaps the backs never have run that in their high school offense. So instead of a lane that they clear for the quarterback, they run into each other. I, I thought Cayman Carter did a heck of a job of getting out of trouble there. I like it with two backs in the backfield, actually, too. in the gun. I'm, I'm it gives you a little more versatility. Look at those two backs you got, too. Estancia, Newport Harbor, two neighbors in the backfield. Oh, that's wide open. Teupa, a little hesitation move. He could have split the 7-10 there, but <laughs> actually elected to go inside. <laughs> Teupa and Murtha both on their way. They're going to play their football games right here at Orange Coast College. What a beautiful facility it's this phenomenal. is here you know, one in of Costa uh, Mesa. One of my and Vinny's very best friends, Doug Smith, Rams center for 14 years, coaches here at Orange Coast College. And his son, Cole, will be starting his second year at Mission Viejo as a starter, and he's only going to be a junior. Wow. And boy, does he look like dad. Coach, how many more national championships could you have won if you had facilities like this at Saddleback? <laughs> well, Make it a little easier to recruit. You know, one of the things about that, I'm sure the guy I worked for, Ken Swearingen, would tell you the facilities don't win football games, but I'd still like to have it. Yeah. <laughs> now, who doesn't like to drive a nice car, right? That's amen. This is really the bellwether of junior college facilities well, here in Southern California. There in, there's one in Bakersfield that if you've never seen Bakersfield College's football stadium, holds 24,000 people, uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. But I'll tell you, around here, this thing is just uh, king of the hill. Alex Schaffet on the perimeter, and Alex sticks his foot in the ground and gets up the field. And again there defensively, Derek Anderson's played a fine game tonight for the now, North. this is a good job of play calling by Kevin Hedding. They're beginning to just pick and punch, take what the defense gives you. But the biggest thing is don't make the quarterback hold the ball. That defensive line is too good. But, Vince, you know what happens when you start going spot up, spot up, swing. The defensive linemen have to run on every play, and pretty soon you wear them out. They get tired, exactly. But they've thrown the ball deep. And Oops. It's another negative play. Very common in an all-star game Absolutely. to see more negative yeah. plays because yeah. the guys have, have not gelled with each other for that long. So you typically have those type of plays. Zach Cody with normally very reliable at the center position from Tribuco Hills made 30 consecutive starts in his high what school I, career. What I really like about what Cayman Carter does here, do not try and be a hero and pick this up and run with it. That's where you get whacked and fumble. Cover the ball punt the ball and live to play another down. Now we're gonna get another chance to watch number 20 back there, James Ferraro, and number one, Julian Moss. Alex Torgerson will lift it away, line drive kick left side, this one immediately out of bounds, and Torgerson drives this one out, and they're gonna mark it right inside the 20, maybe at the 19, right at the 19 yard line. Sounds like a Bubba Watson drive. <laughs> immediately out of bounds. Boy, did you see him light up his caddy? Yeah, unfortunately I did. That was I unbelievable. Did. Yeah. That was very poor. I thought so. I My dad we, used uh, to tell me it's a poor carpenter who blames his tools. <laughs> Last time I checked, he was on the other end of that club, not the caddy. Of course, you know what they tell caddies on the tour if you're brand new? Three rules. Don't show say up, anything. Show up, keep up, and shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what the North does. Going to be the quarterback keep. That was kind of a fumbled snap from center. You know, that's so important when you're in the gun to have a center that can snap the ball appropriately back to the quarterback. No question. Because you're looking down the field. I mean, it, it looks simple, but, you know, there's a little art to that. Vinny, we had a center on our 96 national championship team named Tim Plew from Capistrano Valley. Went on to BYU. We had 330 shotgun snaps. He had two bad ones, two. That's good. And after a while, it, that's a security blanket for a coach That's an and a MVP for your offense, Oh, too. boy. Guys, let's keep an eye on Chad Pace down here at the bottom of the screen, see if they go to him. Out wheel, of the wheel, wheel, oh! They had a wide open. They had that one Dallas parent 
was wide open. What do you call that, Coach? An atom ball? Just throw it you know, right at him. When you tell kids that for the first time, I'll say, <laughs> if a guy's wide open and there's nobody around him, throw him an atom ball. And that, they go, what is that? Adam, I said, baby. throw it right like at him. Coach, you'd been fun to play for. You know, that's Vinny. the reason why some of the coaches <laughs> are coach. so good. Because they're fun to hey, play. John McKay's the deal. same way. You Look, must have went to John McKay school, I'm so, coaching. I'm so old. You could be my quarterback, and KT would be my receiver. We'd never run the ball. How many times can you throw in one game? Hey, Dan DeLeon, did you hear that? Yeah, Sitting Danny. on the couch. Yeah, He's my offensive that coordinator in high school. That Ran the veer. Doggone it. Uncovered receivers wide open. There he is. There's Pace. He's got it for the first down. There was nobody covering Pace well, to start the play, and then the quarterback just brought his eyes to him. Did you see the corner get there late? Well, yeah. And then I saw Pace run a perfect fade route, right. and the quarterback threw it right in the void. Yeah. Once the corner gets there late, you can see Anderson pick him up right away. Good quick release. Nice throw. That's Pace's there you go. fourth throw. catch of the night for 98 yards. He's on top of it. No chance for the safety to get over and help on that play. Great execution there. Jimerson, Jimerson again. Whoa. So I'm saying the coach needs to give him, feed him the ball a little bit. Boy, he hits it quick, doesn't oh, he, fellas? Does he? Wow. Man, you know, one I mean, of the things about get on the phone set this of De Palma game right now is, Vinny, if you're the if you're Fred De Palma, and you know you're going to run your offense in this game, the wing tee. You go tell the register guys, these are the guys I want. Get yourself yeah. five running backs, a whole bunch of big linemen, and a quarterback who can throw. And yeah. At well, the end of a game, this is where conditioning is going to show up. I don't know up. why they don't keep giving him the ball. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Quarterback keeper Anderson forges ahead, and he's going to pick up the first down. Boy, Martinez came in there late with this really hot. I'm not sure. They've got Marino kind of corralled over there. Well, Jameson's kind of tired of the Marino situation. Marino comes up uh, a little hurt. gimpy. Well, a hard hitting, exciting third quarter of football, fellas. Moving up the field, Dallas Parent getting it done. Cayman Carter also going downtown to Scotty Hoover from San Juan Hills. And going into the corner of the end zone, Robinson, a little pushing and shoving. Take a timeout, we'll go to the fourth quarter, seven to three, south over the north. Tell you what, this one's about punch, counter punch. A couple of heavyweights going at it tonight. The stars are out north and south. We head to the fourth quarter. Series all tied at 25 apiece and three ties. So tonight, one of these clubs is gonna take a one game lead and Tommy Jimerson again, working the right side. He picks up a first down to start the fourth quarter. Big third down play too. That's, I mean, this, this kid is running with some. Tim Reinhardt there defensively from Corona Del Mar, make the stop. I you like know, this youngster, Anderson. He's I got uh, got real good presence in the pocket, good leadership skills, smart guy, 4.3 grade point average. Tell me the quarterback you played with at Golden West College, Huntington Beach High School. Marco Paganelli. Marco Paganelli. Reminds me a little bit of Marco. Here Here's comes Trayvon the Coley. And Coley can't get the corner, and he's uh, ridden down right at the 40-yard line. Looked like somebody grabbed a handful of face masks there at the right. end of that play. The late flag. Penalty came in from the head linesman. Could be offensive holding. Let's see what uh, he may be looking in at the uh, at the tackle box. Yes, it is, yep. offensive holding. Penalty would be marked off from the spot of the foul. You know, go back to the touchdown pass that holding. Came Carter threw. Off to Cole Robinson. Ten yards from the spot, replay. So it looks like down. the South gets an advantage there. Then it's called back for offensive pass interference. Then they're driving the ball and the snap over the head. Right. And so I, I agree with you. Count punch, counter punch. But the North right now, I think, starting to find a rhythm running the ball. Well, I like to feed the hot hand, Tavi Jimerson, like you said, Vince Ferragamo. Just keep him going. And then I like the Skya too. He nice. Yeah. Does a nice job putting his foot in the ground. 
Anderson's going to throw, looking up the field. He's got a man, a nice throw and catch, and he's got the big tight end, Joseph Inda. A nice Jay call on first down. The play was made by Trayvon Clo Coley from Modern Day. The ball fake was to him, and he blocked the backside rush in, and that gave Anderson time to throw the ball. That was beautiful. Anytime you can fake the ball and roll out, Bill, like in a counter roll, and then you have the tight end crossing with the wide receiver running the corner route, that's a really nice route. Yeah. And the back in the flat. Second down. Here's Tavi Jimerson. He's got a convoy in front of him, a nice block out in front there. And that was uh, Connor Versteeg from Esperanza High School, six foot, 270 pounder leading the way. If I had a, a play in my offense for the North, I this would be it here. A, a reverse going back toward Marino. Because if you watch Marino, he flattens out coming around the corner, chasing those plays down. They've from done the that once, side. Bill. They've tried that once, but and, uh, it didn't work very good. I tell good. you what, that is also a, a bit of a gamble. <laughs> I give Will King credit for that last tackle. Nice catch. Chad Pace uh, could Double be the slant MVP. Slant. That is his fifth catch, and he's got over 100 receiving yards on the night. He's caught the ball in traffic, you know, he's caught the ball wide open. I mean, he's doing everything. This We're is the double slant, and the second guy is normally the guy that comes open on this play. You can it's like see a trail, him. It's like That's a trail right. person. They, they covered Dallas Parent, the linebacker did, and that opens up the trailer. It's a nice job by Pace, catching that ball with his hands. Got some congestion in the backfield this time, and Good Dallas defense. Parent it's ridden down Nelson there defensively along with Crouch. I was going to say, I haven't heard Nelson's name in a while, but he really stepped up. He's something to be reckoned with. This young man right here, Nick Crouch, he is a fine football player. You know, when you look at all these guys, we've talked about them in the past. Eight for ten for Steve Anderson. We're just having a great night. I mean, you like all these guys. They're all good. <laughs> You have a pretty good team. You put all these oh, guys on cat. one team. Here's the cat and Vizcaya. Not much there on the inside. He's going to be down just inside the 25-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. And over there defensively is a Devon Weiss. Now, this young man is pretty good. From Dana Hill, 6'5", 230, had 116 tackles and nine sacks last year for the Dolphins. This guy, he, you can hang another 30 pounds. That young man might be playing Saturdays for the next four years and maybe sneak in on a Sunday sometime. Oh, Ooh, there was Shot. There. Shot knew he could oh. not get to the throw. And what does Jeff Shot do better than anything else, Kevin? He lays the wood in that safety position back there. Ready, aim, fire. Quarterback spins the laces, and Parent could see that one coming. But well, I was looking at the interior line that time with Amon Sunda, and you know, Jackie Slater went after him at, at Azusa Pacific, and he had pitcher perfect form blocking there for pass protection. I mean, There's he took bar. care of his guy. Well, if, 41 he, plays, yard if he plays for Jack, he's gonna have to oh, be man. perfect. Jack will make him that way. This one almost blocked. The kick is on the way, and it is just shy and to the right. No good. So he the it. South does their job defensively. 8.27 to go. We've got a four-point ball game. South on top of the North. Torgerson back in at quarterback, 8.27 to go. The South with the football. Robert Murtha right side gets the corner and up the sideline and a nice run there by the Estancia Flash. Robert Murtha and bumped out of bounds there by Hayden Paul Dunn from El Dorado High School. I tell you what, if Murtha and Tiapu come in as freshmen and start at Orange Coast for two years, they're gonna be able to run the ball. Those are two very, very good running backs. Eight yard gain up to the 28 yard line. Targeson back in. Gonna ground and pound here, coach, and run some time off the clock. Nope. Post That's is wide going. open. Oh no. We're gonna run it back and in and out of the hands is uh, Staff 
on the reverse, looking up the sideline for Cole Robinson, and he can't hold on to it, but Staff could have picked up the yardage just turning the corner. Trevin Coley almost had that interception coming from in from modern day from a safety position, and he was breaking on the ball. You know, under normal circumstances, a coaching staff would be sure and tell that guy on the reverse, if it's third down, in that case, second down and two, unless that guy's oh. wide open, get the first down. Robinson third down right and front. short. Tayupa picks up the first down and across the 35 and up to the 37 yard line. This is where about a five and a half minute drive would be just what Scott Meyer would order up. James but, Ferraro there defensively for the North from Servite High School. That's just hard to do in an all-star game because you just, you've only had really 12 practices together. I think these guys, these coaching staffs have done a marvelous job with these kids in a very short period of time. To hand off right side to Teupa. Maybe they've tired out this north front just a little bit because this is the first time that the, the south has really put together a consistent running attack. Alex, six of 12 for 76 yards, a touchdown and an interception. All right. Those stats are a little misleading, I think, Bill, because he's, uh, he's thrown the ball very well tonight. And boy, he's got a rifle on. So second down and six. Torgerson, quick snap throw right side, looking for Robinson incomplete. Now here we go, third down, what do you do? You gotta pick up the first down, but then you stop the clock. There's Jake Griffin right there, future superstar for the Corona Del Mar Sea Kings. This young man was out at every practice working with the quarterbacks, snapping the ball back. He's one of the smartest young men I've ever met, Coach. We met him the and, other day. And, and one, of the most polite. one of the most yes, polite. One of the most polite. Just a polished young guy. He's the son of John Griffin, the freshman football coach. Younger brother, Charlie Griffin. There's the Griffin. back again. Into double coverage. Oh, no. He almost split the coverage. Nice effort there. Down the middle, Scott Hoover's had a big night tonight. And Moss, Moss again in great coverage. The guy who wasn't covered was the back again. If the quarterback's just a little look deep and then check down to the back, you can see he's lonesome. He's all by himself yeah. out there. Watch Moss fight and get that Beautiful hand timing. In there. Wow. Beautiful timing to get his hand in there. Doug bro. Case got to be so proud of the game that this young man. They has really played. have some nice defensive backs. I mean, everybody on defense looks really good tonight. I could nominate him for one of the defensive stars tonight for sure. Julian Moss, along with. Garrett Marino for the South, and yep. then of course, Isaac Bioa. I mean, there's been a lot of good individual play tonight. How about Scott Hoover Whew. on the offensive side? You yeah. know, Great a guy catches. that uh, you and I got a chance to see play last year, Doug Case was telling me the other day that Ricky Okariki, the yeah. young man who plays for Foothill, was offered by Stanford last week. Awesome. 4.6 grade average and a phenomenal athlete. Chad Pace, also a big night tonight. Five receptions over 100 yards. Pace, I like Pace. Pace having a great night. Very rate. solid guy. Five catches for 113. James Rubius, right on top of it as always. Our statistician tonight here on Time Warner Cable. Greg Battersby spotting to my left. Vince Ferragamo and Coach Bill Cunity to my right. This guy right in front of us and he's up the field to the 41-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline, Bob Gibson. Okay, thanks guys. Hey, well, I'm here with Martin Bui, and uh, Martin was uh, Santiago High School, first team all league this past season. Uh, having fun so far? Yeah, great time right now, good experience. Um, it's one of my dreams come true, one of my goals I did, and I made it to the All-Star game, so it was unbelievable. I know you got family in the stands here. Your brother's here to support you. He's down from Northern California. Yeah, he was talking to me earlier. And I know one interesting thing about Martin here is you collect ties. How'd you get into collecting ties? Um, because I like I like dressing up when I, and go to special places. So I think a tie makes everything look better. So I start collecting more ties to have more colors, some more opportunity varieties, um, what what to wear and all that kind of stuff like that. So how big is your collection right now? Right now I have about like 35 ties and like 20 bull ties. So it's pretty cool. Well, it's, that's, that's a cool story. Uh, congratulations. Uh, what, what's next for you after this? 
Um, I'm gonna be attending Cal State East Bay, um, majoring in business. So this is gonna be my last football game. So it's a good way to come out with a bang. So yeah, I like it. All right, well, good luck to you, Martin. Thanks for visiting with us and have a good time the rest of the way. All right, back upstairs to you guys. This ball is intercepted. A great defensive play on the far side by the South. And coming down with it is Klatt, Alexander Klatt from Irvine High School. Tell you what, that is a great play. And if he'd have gotten one more block, Vinny, he takes it to the house. There is a penalty flag on the play, and that is going to be a holding against the North team, and it's going to be declined. So the ball will be first down with the South team. That penalty was thrown at the 44-yard line. Look at that interception, taking the ball away from Pace. And you got to be good to take it away from Pace. I think he's had a tremendous night. Look at Shot coming down. Look at the guys in the back. Great convoy coming back for the South. And uh, the many time you throw the ball deep down the field, and it's late, it's always a good chance for uh, interception for the defender. Like Actually, I said, all these defensive backs have been very good tonight, Bill. There were two penalties on the play, one holding against the North, which was declined. Then there was holding on the run back, which was assessed against the South, so they'll take the ball over on their own 47-yard line. Good look at Alex right there, the uh, defensive back of the year in league play, and Alex having fun tonight here on a beautiful night for football. Just over six minutes to go, and we've got a tight ball game. 7-3, South in control and with the football. Torgerson hands it off to Drake Martinez, and Martinez can't find any room to go because Manu Pau, another star tonight right there defensively. Boy, he's just been excellent. He played linebacker at Servite. He's played strong safety. Uh, just a bright, bright future for Mana. The North still playing that 4-3 cover two, and I'll tell you what, those two corners tonight have done an excellent job, and I think Moss has just been outstanding. Second down and 10. There's the back again. Oh. Torgerson's got pressure from the backside, and here comes Isaac Fioa again. That is Fioa's seventh tackle of the night. He's having himself a big game, even an MVP status game. I believe you're right. It's a... Uh, he had 80 tackles last year for the Marina Vikings. Six sacks. I think he's got a pair tonight. Herculean effort by Isaac Fioa. Third down and 15 for Torgerson. Here comes pressure, steps up, throws. He's got Alex Staff, Staff dancing around. Looked like he had the first down, first. and then he went backwards. He's going to be denied the first down. So Staff hemmed in, tried to find some running room, but could not pick up the first down. Here's the biggest call of the game for Scott Meyer. You've got fourth down, and I'm going to say a yard maybe, maybe a little less than a yard. If you make a first down, you're into your four-minute offense, you grind the clock, you win the game. If you get stopped here, the North team gets the ball at midfield with a chance to win the game. It's an all-star game. I Let's think what you do it. here, I think you trust your quarterback. Let's see if they do. They might run it. Ah, they got him with the snap. The good use of the hard count. Zach Cody there getting high fives from the offensive line. The hard count win. Do you think he good. squeezed it a little bit? You know, yeah, maybe. But I'll, I'll tell you what you have to be careful of. The official little hitch. The officials now are just death on quarterbacks nodding their head. Yeah. You got to be just use your voice. And I think uh, Torgerson did a great job. Dave White trains quarterbacks so well. It, uh, how many times have you seen an Edison guy be an all league or all league, uh, all county quarterback? Drake Martinez has got a seam. He's dangerous on the edge, and Trevon Coley there to make a touchdown saving tackle because he's a one-stepper. He gets to the edge, fellas, yeah. and he's gone. He likes the edge. You remember the other night sure. at practice watching him run that little Ooh. quick inside zone? Tell you what, if he's got up ahead of steam, he's How would you like that 1,800 yards? Well, look at that last number. Jeez, oh, 1,800 touchdowns, not even in your fantasy league. Man, nine yards a I carry. like that average. 
First down. Martinez stutter oh, step nice move patience. around the corner. And Trevon Coley there. Again, to make the tackle, he stays in bounds at the 15-yard right. line. Very smart play there by Drake Martinez. Yeah. You know what, Kevin, from a coach's perspective, what he just did would Im really impress coaches. If you go out of bounds, you stop the clock, and you really give the other guy a little bit of a chance for life. But by staying in bounds, that clock is grinding. Watch him right there. Wow. Put his shoulder into the ground. He'll play free safety at Nebraska. Yeah, you got Stanton and you yes, got he will. Martinez, both in the same backfield. Smart play by Coley. He was trying to get the ball out. Big oh, hit in the backfield man, I heard there. That from up here. That's Troy Kurtz. We haven't mentioned his name. He was a team MVP for the Canyon Comanches, the 5'11, 225 pounder, 85 and touchdowns. Bleed, the one we just interviewing on the sideline right. came in and made that hit. Nice job. Big hit. That's a well good time coach, for it. Two you minutes know. and 35 seconds. Some of these young men will never put on the pads again. That's a point that you, you just heard a moment ago. Um, young men talking about, the buoy was just talking about maybe not playing ever again. My feeling is he may get the urge sometime because he's too good to sit and watch. Here's Robert Murtha gets the call on second down. and bottled up at the line of scrimmage, and we're going to have a timeout exercise by the North. How big was that throw by Torgerson throwing that ball on that third down? That might win the that game was big. That was a yep. big play. Clutch throw. Timeouts left, two for the North, and that's what's critical right now because if you can hold the South to a field goal, you've still got a chance to win this game. Tell you what, I'm, I'm really proud of the job that Fred De Palma's done at Catella High School. They've had declining enrollment there. Over 50% of his athletes are bust into the school, so they've got issues with trying to keep kids in school, and a lot of these youngsters have to work to help out the family, and what he's done there to keep those kids enrolled, buying into the weightlifting program, buying into the discipline. They've had great retention the last two years, and I think I mentioned earlier, their freshman enrollment has doubled the That's last awesome. two years. So that program is alive and well, and the Catella Knights are on their way back, and that man right there needs to be commended Fred De Palma, and if he can get these kids to continue to buy in, the sky's the limit, just like what Willie Puga's done over at Garden Grove High School. I was thrilled when he was named the North coach because he has really put in the time, paid his dues, and really getting the fruits of his labor right now. Torgerson. Okay, that's going to be fourth, the field goal. fourth down and 10. The field goal team will come in. I would have ran it right over the middle of the field. <laughs> that's... Uh, that's still going to leave, even if they run this down. I don't know if the North is going to use their last time out. Clock is running right now at 150. So what you might see is the South team, and this is one of those clock management things. Let the clock run down, call timeout with one second left on the play clock, and then send your field goal team in. So Scott Meyer standing right next to the official. And you'll see him pop the timeout sign right there. Okay, minute and a half. Those are smart guys over there on that Corona Del Mar yeah. sideline. We watched Dan O'Shea and Kevin had to work. And honest to goodness, it's almost like being out on an NFL or a college football field. The way that they coach, the passion, the language, the way they get these kids to buy in and respond, it is, it is awe-inspiring to see those guys work and, and get what they get out of their kids. You know, the one, the one thing that impresses me as an old coach watching them practice is they practice fast. They get everything done, they get their point across, but you don't see guys standing around. Everybody moves, and I think that just sets the tempo for the way you play. Lanny Boer down there talking to that defense saying, hey, you know what, guys? Get a hand up. Maybe we can block this. 
Guys, the score doesn't indicate it, but I'll tell you what, this has been one of the most entertaining yeah. All-Star games we've done in the last five years. Absolutely. Very the, good game. The physicality. That's That's been the trademark. And the execution game. on defense has been a lot of fun to watch tonight. I've been very impressed with the defensive backs in this game, the defensive line, linebackers from both sides. And Clatt coming up with that interception yeah. and Moss with the deflections. Griff Amy's from good the 24-yard line. Be a 34-yard field goal to Tim. This one is on the way, and it is good. Setting up we've a tie a, game. We've got a penalty marker, though, fellas. Hold everything. Amy's hammered that one. That was that had a little redemption behind it, didn't well, it? Well, let's watch and see what the what the penalty is. It looked like it was going to be called against the South. Let's see, holding against the South. Wow, that's a big one. Oh. Yeah, it is. Takes the points off the board. That's a ten yard penalty, isn't it? The one thing it does is it did allow seven more seconds to run off the clock, but the North retained one timeout. Fred De Palma kept that in his back pocket. Amy's will now be kicking from the 31 yard line. Let's see where they finally spot the ball. It's actually gonna be deeper than that. The ball is gonna be spotted at the 31. Kickers are always about seven yards. Always about seven yards back. 48, 48 yarder. So I'll tell you what, what a huge difference between the 24 yarder and this one now from the 38 yard line. Boy, if you block this one, you could get back in the game in a heartbeat. So a 48 yarder, state record holders, kick is on the way, oh. not even close. Well, no short. it looked like there might have been blocked. Was there a contact there? You know, I told you about the guy being a special teams player. The guy that almost blocked that was Moss. Here come the Boo Birds. No flag on the play. All right, here we go, fellas. You're going to see Griff Amy's get smoked here when he comes in and kicks the ball. I couldn't see most of that, but what I do know is the North has the ball with 123 and a timeout. Well, the white hat yeah, is looking right at the there. play, and that's his <laughs> call. So obviously, he didn't didn't think that contact was warranted for a penalty. Quick toss to Pace, and Pace gets it to the 30-yard line. And Joe Moore in here for the final drive of the night. 1.16 to go. The clock is stopped as they move the chains on the first down. The hardest thing about this is if you haven't practiced no huddle, that's hard to do when the clock is running. Nice snap back, waist high, and this one looking for Vizcaya, and there's some contact, inadvertent contact there, no call, good no call. Is that a flag back there in the back of the secondary? I don't sure see it. Sure looks like it. it. The back oh, judge yeah, it threw is. it. The back judge threw a flag. Now remember, in, in high school, people always get this confused. There is no five-yard rule, that's the NFL. In high school, you can bounce and jostle the receiver until the ball is in the air. Now let's see what this call is, because it was called, maybe they'll wave it off. Yes, wave they are. Off. That's good officiating. Second down. They talked it over again. I've been so impressed with this officiating crew. They don't make independent judgments. They talk it over. They've gotten every call right Correct. tonight. Correct. Okay, 108. You still got that timeout in your back pocket. Moore looking, nine route for Pace, and Pace can't get separation. Good identification there by Will King from Laguna Hills yep. High School. Haven't mentioned his, he's made a couple of plays yeah. tonight, and uh, fundamentally, very sound out on the perimeter. He was a heck of a player for the Hawks, for Bruce Ingles, and I think, you know, right now, if you're the North team, you know, you think about time, and you think about a timeout, what you really have to think about is, it's third down and 10. They have two and downs. You got two downs or two you downs. turn the ball over. They're gonna throw it to Pace. Tough throw for Joe Moore, Vizcaya there and uh, out of bounds and that's gonna bring up fourth, fourth down. down. Over there defensively. They got five yards, which is good. It's counter Tui from Tesoro High School. Here we go, fellas. Fourth and five, 52 seconds, down by four. You got this one, Vinny. Well, they're gonna do the same play to the right. They're gonna roll to the right, try to get the back in the flat. 
dump it off, get the first down. They have plenty of time. Dallas Parent sets up in the slot. Pace goes wide to the right. Jimerson in the backfield, more pressure, dumps it off to Tavi Jimerson from Orange Lutheran, and he's going to be wrestled down. And who's there but Garrett Marino from Mission Viejo High School? Well, I just hope that young man gets over to Arizona State, gets his academics all squared away, and gets a chance to play because he has remarkable ability. There's your ball game. And Milo Avilas also over there at 5'6", 165 in hot pursuit to get the assist. The diminutive one, the nose tackle from Huntington Beach High School. Has a motor that just never stops. Now, 43 seconds left. And I think you really have to be aware of sportsmanship here. You're just going to take a knee twice. And then this will go into the record books. Scott Meyer ever going to lose a big game? <laughs> <laughs> Five in a row for the South. So finally, this tie deadlocked at 25-25 and three. The South will take a 26-25 to lead in this series in the 54th annual edition of the Orange County High School Football All-Star Game. What I'm seeing down there makes me feel really good as a coach. I saw three North guys go over and shake hands before that play with the guys from the south. So no shenanigans, one more snap. Yeah, it's great I mean, yeah. these, these guys all are warriors. Game. They've played their fannies off. They put on yeah. a great show for great all these job. people. That's the way it should end because you know what? Most of these people are going to forget what the score was in this game, but the players and the parents will remember they played in it. That's right. great sportsmanship by both sides and both coaching staffs and the officiating crew need to be commended yeah, for absolutely. that tonight. And that's going to be the end of the game Great right there. Great job, gentlemen. Great representation of high school football. Our hats are off to the 2012-13 Orange County All-Stars. I'm tipping my hat to you, fellas. Stars are on the field tonight here that's at Orange right. Coast College. You know what, it was an entertaining game from start to finish. Uh, great sportsmanship, as we said, Kevin, and great job for both coaching staffs in two we less than two weeks getting these teams ready to go. And these players, even though some may be playing their last game, some are going to go on to have some great careers, and we're going to look back one day and say, you know, we saw those guys at that great All-Star game. You know, uh, my perspective is, is twofold. Number one, these kids are going to go on and do great things. It may not be on a football field, but they showed tonight their character and their class. For all the people in the stands tonight, how many high school football players do you think were here tonight who are in their summer program saying, you know what my goal is? I want to play in like that, that game before yeah. I leave my football career. Guys, Chad Pace will take our hats off to the offensive player of the night. Six receptions, 123 yards on the other side defensively. We'll give a game ball to Garrett Marino defensively. Ten tackles, including three sacks. For my broadcast partners, Vince Ferragamo and Bill Kennedy, James Covarrubias, our spotter, statistician tonight greg battersby producer director marcus williams i'm kevin turner saying so long and good night everyone